All right, we'll call this scheduled session April 15th, regular scheduled session of this court in the order. And we'll start with a uh, invocation by Commissioner Tom Ellis. Thank you, Judge. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that it is a privilege to serve on this court for all the members of our community and beyond, as Kentucky is a wonderful state that we live in. In our actions today, please make sure that we have balance, judgment, integrity, and that we're ever mindful of our duty to act fully on behalf of our constituents countrywide. In our deliberations, as we undertake issues directly impacting the lives of our constituents, please guide everything that we discuss. We pray for those who are in harm's way overseas and here in our nation. We ask for peace and tranquility. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, if you join me in the Flag of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's see. Next, we have approved the minutes uh, from the uh, prior meeting. Make motion to approve the minutes as presented. I second. Motion has been made by Magistrate Gay to approve the minutes as presented, seconded by Magistrate Ellis. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those like sign, motion carried. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next, uh, Mariah, we'll approve some, some uh, bills. We need, a, we need a, yeah, doorkeeper. Little doorbell. Doorbell or something. She, she went back. That's what they call the wind. All right. Paint your way. You're on delay still? Um, you're not on YouTube at all. So <laughs> I didn't know you all had started. Um, okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are, are we on camera? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, so the bills to be paid total one million one hundred thirty four thousand four hundred and seven dollars and forty cents. The standing orders total seventy seven thousand five hundred seventy eight and ninety four cents. Move we pay the bills as presented. Second. Major Magistrate Gage has approved the bill as presented. Second by Magistrate Salmon. Any discussion on the bill? Question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those like sign. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. All right. Okay, let's see. Uh, what we have next is uh, budget transfers. <clears throat> no budget transfers this time. I like that. That's good. Very low. No budget transfers and about cash transfer. We got two uh, cash transfers. Um, one to the joint jail for one hundred and twenty thousand, and one to EMS for fifty thousand. That's for operations and salary purposes. We pay the cash transfers as presented or make the cash transfer. Second. Okay, motion made by Magistrate to make the cash transfer as presented and seconded by Magistrate Sammons. Is there any questions? Anybody? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those like sign. All right. What else? Uh, 
What I have next is uh, our consent calendar, and today we're going to welcome uh, President Milton Moreland from Center College. This is he, and then Greg Butler from Republic Services, and we got some other gentlemen here. Uh, Kevin Duffy, also Republic Services. Okay, Kevin Duffy. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, what uh, there's a uh, President Moreland. Uh, this is the first time he's been here to uh, afford with great honor. I've had the opportunity to visit with him in his office, and we had a great conversation. And he has graciously agreed to be here today to talk about another issue that's very important to Center College, the community, the city of Bamboo, and Morrill County. So, Mr. President, if you would like to step up to the microphone, and these other gentlemen can have their, their moment uh, after you, you start out. This is, and you might want. I preface this by saying, this is this is part of Center's new uh, campus modernization, not modernization, strategic plan uh, that they have moving forward, and it does encompass things that are owned by other entities in the city. Indeed, thank you, thank you for having me, and appreciate the uh, opportunity just to tell you a little bit about the project, even though. The piece of it that we're working with Republic on um, is kind of a, a smaller piece of it. It still is, is a core factor in our ability to move forward. Um, as you may have seen in some recent publicity that we um, pushed out on Monday, our board just approved a $50 million project. There's also 10 more million for other renovations on campus. We hope to, of course, use that to inspire not only Center College, but Boyle County and, and Danville and have that be an incredible facility. The primary goal is to uh, move our baseball field, which is right now in the heart of campus, to uh, what we would call our South Campus, um, to property that uh, is now owned by two groups, both of whom we're working with. One owns a storage facility and one owns the Republic uh, facility there just south of our softball and just next to our um, or it's south of our soccer and just next to our uh, softball fields. Um, it's an incredible opportunity for us if we can uh, have that baseball complex. What we would hope is as you come from the south towards that part of Danville, um, you would now approach a very beautiful uh, set of fields and um, we would see that as kind of transformational for that part. <clears throat> But then as you move closer to campus, uh, a, a new 50 meter 10 um, lane natatorium that would be, I think, very special for Danville and Boyle County. We would like that to be a facility that is not just for center, but is really puts the, the, the central Kentucky on the map as a great facility. Uh, 200 meter indoor track and 40 yard uh, football multi-use uh, field in the middle there and um, new football stadium lacrosse stadium and uh, just a beautiful set of problems that of course athletics has been working with us on and we've hired a firm out of cincinnati msa um, who works with the reds and works with a lot of other colleges so we're happy with the plans um, and just excited to uh, be able to move this forward but of course with entities that that uh, have some other uh, business um, we would you know seek your approval to to be able to go forward with the purchase of that land well uh, i appreciate you being here today i know that the court's been anxious to get a chance to see you and meet you and everything and and just to, to bring uh, clarity to this you know the last court session we had we had miss angie make a mention about a breach of contract as it relates to a public services contract uh, on the utilization or lack thereof on certain certain conditions, they're on on uh, are going on drive. So, in hot in hindsight, counselor uh, presented a letter to them. We've talked about it in my office with counsel and and, and Greg Butler. Uh, it, it it appears that this business venture, this economic development venture that the center is initiating, uh, it is outweighs any breach of contract consideration 
And what I would specifically request of the court, and you have some read ahead on this and some knowledge about it, is consideration that that we amend our Republic Services contract to exclude the requirements for that transfer station on Roy Arnold. And they have made some concessions. And uh, Greg, if you want to talk about those, you can feel free. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, sir. And thank you for that uh, overview. Um, yeah, so what we're able to do is provide any customer that uses the transfer station or has used the transfer station historically, anyone that schedules at least one collection per month, we can offer them, guarantee them service that is cheaper than the, what they would have paid to take that material to the uh, transfer station. The, quite simply, the cost for us to operate that facility far outweigh the cost for us to deliver, uh, let somebody fill up, and then remove a container. Uh, specifically, what we're going to do is free, dis uh, free rental and free delivery for that service. They'll have to pay a haul rate and a disposal rate. So basically, you know, one cost to move it and then one cost for the amount of weight that's in there. Um, but that effective rate will be less than what they would be paying at the transfer station. Uh, we'll commit to that going forward for the duration of the contract. So essentially till the end of 2024. Um, and then separate and apart from that, you know, we partner with Boyle County and the communities, uh, Danville and Perryville, you know, throughout the county in a lot of ways and a lot of, for a lot of years. And one of those ways is animal disposal. Um, and so we've reviewed our uh, agreement with Boyle County and what we're able to do going forward is to offer a discounted rate um, for what you guys are currently paying. So that'll be 25% less. Uh, it should be a significant savings for the for the county going forward. And we will do that at least until the end of the contract. And I would imagine that that's something that we would continue to do. Uh, and that's good news. I appreciate your email. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good news. Yeah. That, that, that. Yeah. Judge. Yes. Um, <clears throat> with the size of the blue area and the fact that Boyle County is probably the premier cattle uh, location in Central Kentucky, and Central Kentucky is uh, remarkably uh, blessed with cattle farms and other farms where we, we send the dead animals. Um, this is a critical decision for us because we had a very bad year a couple of years ago where we had 2,000 animals. And uh, that rate won't fluctuate whether it's a good year uh, mm -hmm. where only a few hundred uh, are brought to you or that's correct. God yep. forbid, even worse. That's correct. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's something we can commit to. Uh, the volume, or the I guess the quantity is probably about uh, is is irrelevant to us. Are you doing the model composting from the UK study? And... No, but I did. I so I was Angie's uh, counterpart at Franklin County many years ago and worked uh, extensively on that uh, project. Yeah. And so can answer many many questions about animal composting. It's a miracle. If you haven't seen one in action, I highly encourage it. Um, We've been to the Franklin County side. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah it's, so it's outstanding. It is for what it is, and I don't know. Sort of going off my. Well, this brings peace of mind to my constituents, uh, uh, Madison Collins constituents of Cal. Others have a few, um, and to the taxpayers as well. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Butler? Uh, the. Um, the services that you're going to provide is that capped uh, each month on how many mm -hmm. like no in fact the more the more there is the better you know I, truly we are able to offer the same services and hit the margins that we need to do better than we can at the okay. yeah, I, by not roughly how many customers you that you that well that's assistance. so it seems like about a year ago maybe you guys almost kind of doubled the cost from what some of the contractors told me or what they were paying mm -hmm. to what they are paying now. And so a lot of them have kind of said, you know, it's cheaper to go somewhere else. Yep. And so that was my concern. If, we, if we've if we averaged this based on, you know, maybe the 10 or 15 people that you said that use it as of now, um, that would be a concern of mine. Um, but if we're going to provide this to anybody and everybody that wants it. Construction. Constru yeah, I understand yeah. that. I understand. So um, I just wanted to make sure that, that it's not capped, you know, utilizing that average of 10 to 12 people that might use it or have used it over the last year. So we're just basing this on the per ton rate, right? So I think it's $150 so if it, if it's 100 per people that want to bring construction material to you. It doesn't. You're going to accept it. Okay. Okay. At, at the rates that. Right. And we're, you know, this is intended for customers that use the transfer station. 
And you're going to reach right. out to We're those mailing customers, is that correct? We've already contacted everyone that has an account with us. Uh, Angie provided one customer that was uh, upset to us, and we've worked out an arrangement with them. Anybody else that stops by the facility, you know, we take their information, we get them in touch with the sales rep. Um, and but it's only commercial, it's not residential, right? Right. Because I've used it a couple times when I've been renovating stuff, I've dropped stuff off there or whatever, so. You know, the, I mean, truthfully, the landfill's not that far away. Yeah. You know, I think it's only 14 miles from Danville, and, sure. um, you know, and it's even cheaper there. Yeah. Okay. We can take it up there. Yeah, sir. Any, any, uh... I mean, it sounds like a good, a good thing. You don't let that drink get cold. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the, I didn't know the animal uh, disposal part. Yeah. So that, that sounds... That's a, that sounds like a good old... Greg will know that's something near and dear to my heart that we've talked about on a couple of occasions, and I appreciate your gracious uh, conveyance on that. Absolutely. With everything from wet bags of concrete on a job site to electrical, plumbing, everything, what can't those folks bring to you? Uh, we don't accept hazardous wastes. Yeah. Um, and we don't, to, I mean, I don't think this is going to be a, a concern for most people, but we don't accept liquids. Okay. That's more of a manufacturing okay. type of byproducts. Um, but for the most part, you know, if you create it, if you generate it, we'll, we'll take it. So okay. any housing renovation or building, 99% mm -hmm. is going to come through. To yeah, what about okay. asbestos shingles? We do take shingles. The asbestos is? The old ones. The old the ones. Old. You know? So it has to be Yeah, yeah. So that's a special waste. We can't really, okay. We're getting into all the things today. So <laughs> special waste. So just you get some of these old houses, they got a lot of asbestos. Yeah. Stuff. So that just means that we have to have some file, you file some reports and paperwork before we do it. And then that allows us to track where and when it was disposed in the landfill. In case there was an issue, we can go back and find it. I'm glad sort of um, that uh, Magistrate George brought that up because many of our old houses in the area are being renovated. And some people cover the old siding, some people take it off, and the lead paint comes into play. If they bring lead paint, weatherboarding, what happens? Uh, so anything, anything after that, right? versus non friable non friable we can take just as a different type of container. Friable, we would have to make something fresh so we can make it. Right. Thank you. All right. Uh, what I would like to. It wasn't being rude, I was just. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> What I would like to uh, yeah. entertain would be a motion that we amend our contract with Republic Services to free up the responsibility to the county that the transfer station had been uh, part of and that th that will be removed from our expectation with the considerations that you've just heard discussed. So we, I asked for an amendment to our contract with Republic Service to, to amend the removal of the transfer okay station requirement. I'll make that motion. I'll second. second. Motion made by Magistrate Cullen, seconded by Magistrate Ellis. Judge, I'd like to explain my vote. All right. Uh, you men cannot imagine uh, the duration and the debate that we've had over animal composting and removal. And again, with the incredible uh, successful farms that we have cattle farmers in this area and horse and others. Um, this is good news and I, I hope that all the cattlemen and other farmers in the area will be pleased with this decision. Oh, it is very good news, very good news. All right. Will, will Chris be writing that, that change? Uh, how does, who, who, how do who you, would? We submitted a sample. Of the, we have an amendment that, I, that you would authorize by this vote for me to sign for the county and then we go to them is my understanding. It is a one page document. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I have it in here. Do, I, do you have a copy of it? Uh, I don't know if I can work with you or not. You would give me a copy. To it's Chris, but regardless, Chris will be reviewing it. I haven't seen it. You yeah. haven't seen it? It's not, okay. Would, would it be all right to make that after Chris's review? Sure. Be sure. part of the motion. But that part of the amendment that will be, uh, yeah. it will be approved for final re legal review. review by council. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Just so you know, in our discussions, in his absence, Patrick was part of the letter of response okay. to yeah. them. So we're the, the county attorney's office is, is in tune with I, I some of this going on. I think it's wise that we get the stamp of approval from okay. proper sources. All right. And so, I just uh, want to say that um, I'm going to abstain from the vote as an employee of Center College, and but I do want to say that 
this is a small but very key part of this uh, amazing project that the center is undertaking that will have long-lasting effects for the college and for the community. Would you characterize it as the center cut of the country? Huh? <laughs> I, think that's a, I think it sounds like a request for a pay raise. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Pre Pre <laughs> President Moreland, is the, um, right behind the uh, lacrosse field hockey, there's that those buildings back there, they're kind of a little, little run down or whatever. Is that part of your acquisition? Have you acquired that already or is that? Um, it, it is not. I, we, we have been in conversations with them. I, I don't think that. Um, I just wasn't sure what, what you've acquired so yeah, far. That was more of a question. Not, not that. Okay. All right. Um, just a long term, we would Goal. Like to have the opportunity if, if the uh, owners are willing or any other opportunity there. That is a, a great opportunity, I think, for the city and county to clear out uh, piece there, but also would uh, add to you know parking and being able to bring in high school teams and park their buses and lots of lots of ways that that could be used very profitably. I think for this project. But okay. Not yet. Judge, we didn't have a motion. We didn't have a vote on that last motion. Yeah, well, we didn't get a vote on that. No, we're yeah. ready. But we have we have motion to be seconded. Uh, votes have been explained and comments have been rendered. So, is there anything else? There's nothing else. We'll vote, and uh, we have one abstention. So the so the uh, the votes will not include Magic Gay because of reasons that so stated. All those in favor of amending the uh, Republic uh, contract to reflect the removal of responsibility for the transfer station. Uh, after a review by uh, county attorney and by council, uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. And that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, Mr. Thank President, you very much. good day. Mr. Mullen, I have. Mr. President, I'm going to interrupt all the time. Like the government. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He gives Tom great. second help. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moreland, I had one question for you, Lee, yes, before I brutally interrupt you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I read the article and uh, it's in the paper and been following this pretty closely, which I love, Senator, as you well know. Yes. Uh, but I didn't see anything at all pertaining to the basketball court, the gymnasium. And that's an antique uh, gymnasium with, uh, I like going to the game, but I don't like to sit on those hard bleachers. <laughs> Has anything been uh, addressed to that, the basketball court or it, anything? It, it certainly, there, there have been upgrades in Sutcliffe Hall of uh, late, in particular, some of the practice facilities for basketball which are really premier quality. But yes, those, I think, lend themselves to the ongoing massive plan. We're not done yet. But this is a big piece of it to get us to get into a premier sports facility. We're going to come back to such a tax. Well, the last year or so, we've had a pretty good basketball team, haven't we? We have. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, so, and uh, we're not going to let them off the gas recruiting at Center College. To me, that's, a, that's the most important thing. Baseball can be second to <laughs> and, and let it be known that when Magistrate Gay uh, invited uh, Magistrate Sanders and me, he did make us better. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Always. In the meantime, we'll fill a pillow. Yeah, we'll okay. you Thank you, sir, for being with us. Thank you. My Thank you. I thought I got him one already. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. So, if you don't care, Judge, we we'll um, want to request for the primary maintenance bid, and this is for our heat and air unit uh, for the uh, PM of it. Uh, we're going to put out the same proposal that Dwayne, actually we're going to just take his and cop, cut and paste and uh, just use it for our unit. So I'd, I'd like the court's permission yeah, to, to advertise for bid with that out. How come you're separating yourself out? Do you have different payment? Well, it, when it was put in, like each department paid its share, so it was on the basis. I, I guess that's why we're doing it. I don't know. I mean, I'm okay if it wants to include it all in one. But you know whose budget, I guess, to keep it well, fair for the budget. I so. guess you would take a proportional share of the total 
cost of the contract if you'd pay 25 percent and they'd pay 10 15 20 25 whatever yeah and i'm i'm fine with that so i, I however however the court wants to do it i'm well, they could save it, sake, and then save us some advertising dollars too. Yeah, would. So when Dwayne comes in, I guess we we'll just ask that. We we'll just ask that you be added on to the contract. And if, you know, oh, right consideration. Add our units to his units. Right. Okay. Well, I'm I'm great with that. Okay. Um, and since we're talking about the next one is the uh, planning for the jail's future, I just kind of want to let you know where we're at today. We're at 189. Boyle has 57, Department of Corrections is 105, and Mercer's at 24, and I'm housing one, I think three for other counties, but I was just informed yesterday that um, Mercer County indicted 56. Of course, they've not had any grand juries in several months, so if you take that, usually Boyle County's double or triple, would that be fair, Chris? So at 189, I'm full. Of course, I have 220 beds, but the difference between 189 to, to 220 is for the spikes in the right. population, weekends and stuff. So we're looking at probably being at uh, 380, 400 that quick. And the problem I have the last time is we could take inmates to Casey County. They, we, mm -hmm. we have a standing deal with them where they could hold, house inmates for us. Well, since Lincoln County, Closing. is closing or whatever they're doing they're it currently from what i've been told they're only housing lincoln inmates so garrett i think inmates had a contract also with jessamine county so they've moved theirs up there and then casey county has taken some of those from lincoln so they're not going to have the room to house our inmates and that's that's the only jails around can we start exiting some of the state well we're going to lose revenue again and we're going to be back in a spot i mean uh, we are getting an increase. Jamie and I were just talking about this before we came in. So with uh, it's two dollars per diem, two dollars per diem plus plus, for, for... plus where we are ahead of the other jails in providing services for like the reentry, we will receive more money uh, for that on top of, from the state. And where James Hunt is has a college degree and he's working on his master's versus just having a high school degree, we get extra money for that. So. We we will get more money than other jails. We'll, we'll because of the programming and stuff that we offer. Um, I think a 90-day program we get a thousand dollars. A 60-day program we get six hundred dollars, and for 30-day programs we'll get three hundred dollars. So we could shoot ourselves in the foot because you know this has been a hard year. I've lost probably 43 percent of my revenue. We've had the COVID expenses that nobody planned for. You know the COVID salaries. So. We, we even though it's it's not a profit it's cash flow and, and we need that money to offset what both counties are paying so i'll just put that out there i mean that's that's ultimately your all's choice that's what you want to do but um you're, uh, you're the elected officials not right now i, I wouldn't it's not um, all just us uh, you know right now i wouldn't because of okay um but ron, ron what are we getting for uh bringing another prisoner in from another other county not uh well zero because like the three we're holding yeah. is is we basically have a mutual agreement with all the other jails we don't charge them and when they hold our inmates they don't charge, they don't charge us. us so it's kind of a wash i know that uh, washington county uh approached me last week the, the jailer asking if we'd be willing to house their inmates and I said, I, and I told him no. I said I would love to. I said, but here's about here's what's about to happen. Was it's just what I've explained to you all, and he understood. But if we had the facility to house more inmates, you know, I think if we did a forty-five dollar a day per inmate, not have the same arrangement we have with Mercer County, but just charge them uh, per inmate per day, and they cover that inmate's medical costs. So if they come up here and they're on dialysis or going through chemo, any of those things, it's really expensive that county would have to cover their medical bills, that would benefit us. I think we would actually make a little money uh, on, on doing it that way. How can you charge uh, $32 a day and come out? You can't, and that's all the state will give us. And this is, the state has not raised our funding in 16 <clears throat> years. So 16 years ago, $32 was probably, you could probably do it for that. 
But as for, you know, the past 16 years, the cost of housing folks it continues to go up, the medical cost, everything else. So, well, I so, overheard a conversation with the Casey County judge and one of his magistrates, and they were talking about accepting the uh, Lincoln County inmates. And being nosy, I want to know what they charge per day. And uh, the judge said, well, we charge what the state allows, $32. I said, I don't see how you can come out. Well, the reason they charge that, and, and this is kind of what I picked up, is, you know, when they built their jail, they don't house as many county inmates, so they were able to house more state inmates to pay, and I think that kind of puts them in a better situation than we're in uh, financially on the cost. Um, you know, with our building, they have a newer facility. I mean, it's yesterday or this whole week, we've dealt with a sump pump out front. That basically, if, when you come out there, you'll notice where the water's always going across the drive behind Dwayne's barn where he parks his um, dump trucks. That has went out, that has a leak in it, and that water pipe controls or feeds our fire suppression system. So we actually had somebody from the company to look at it, and he was able to fix it, but it's just basically putting a thumb in the, in the, in the you know, or putting your finger in it. He says, when this goes out, it's going to have to be replaced because it's so old. It's been there 20-some years, and the, the fittings or bushings or whatever inside are, are just getting old. And he said, you know, that's a cost we're going to have to pick up. Um, you know, with our building, every day is a struggle. I walk in, there's something broke. You know, the showers, I mean, I mean it's constant, just trying to keep it going. We're walking in, right? <laughs> I, 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 that would be a nice life. option. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little slow here. So if holding the state inmates cost us money, um, we're not making any money on it. How's it revenue? Well, it's cash flow. It's, the wall. It, it's cash flow. So you have to think about this. The million, the, the budget is 5.3 million. Uh, Boyle County pays, judge, correct me if I were, we're 79, what? 79. Okay. 21, 79, 20, 70, 70, yeah, 79, 21. Yeah, 79, 21. So, so both counties, so we're paying 79% of that. Mercer County pays. I thought they were 20, 27. I can do 27, 73. Sorry. That's a, yeah, 20, okay. 20, 27. 27, 70. Yeah. That was right. the old one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that money comes in and helps offset the cost to both counties. Is kind of the way I look at it. <clears throat> you because also, it, you know, you also have extra expenses. If you, I mean, if you, <clears throat> if they're half of your population, or more than half of your population, you're having to. I mean, your expenses go up. So if you, and I'm, I mean, I, I'm not questioning how you do your job. Well, I, the, I know you're that you're very good, but I'm just trying to understand, like, <clears throat> if we're spending you know, more money just so we can have some money coming in. It doesn't make a lot of sense in some ways. And I agree with that. And, you know, the, when you figure out your, when you do the cost, okay, let's say it cost us $40 a day for inmate, that's really a misnomer or a false leader because it still costs us $5.3 million a year. So the more inmates you have in there, your cost per inmate goes down, but it's still costing you $5.3 million. To an extent, if, if you don't need to hire as many people or if you don't need to staff as many people, you're – your expenses kind of start going down. Right, the you're, fixed cost. You're, you're, yeah, because we, we, we've talked about it. We, let's say if we didn't house. You're Peter to pay Paul. That's right. kind of what we're doing here. If we didn't house state inmates anymore, what's it going to cost us? Well, you know, one of our big fixed costs is staffing. Well, instead of coming in and just laying a bunch of people off, we could do it through attrition. So if they left or retired, we wouldn't replace those positions. So that would lower part of our fixed cost. I think we've discussed this with the renovations or the new jail, whatever it is. But if we got rid of the state and then we started taking in others at, say, 50 or $55 a day, wouldn't we actually be in a positive? We would. I don't think we could get 50, 55. I think 45 would be our max. Plus 45, and they, they, do, they accept the medical. They, yeah, they pay all the medical we bills. Come out ahead. We could still come out ahead. Can but we get 45? I think that's pretty much what other counties we've. We've had I've had this conversation with other jailers and they were asking or we were all kind of asking what would it be and it's forty to forty five dollars a day. 
Um, I don't see how that we would not want to pay it because they couldn't afford to build a jail. You can't build a jail for less Conversations I've had with uh, so. Mercer County Judge that uh, we've examined all aspects of this and there's no pushback to further negotiation on the state side of it, of, of maybe drawing down. And, and there's two things. Um, I, Adair County yeah. has done a feasibility study. And we, we need to reach out to them. I'm going to reach out to their jailer. I don't know if you know their judge. But we they have done it looking at I don't know if they're going to shut their jail down. I, I don't know what's going on. But they are no longer housing, I think, state inmates. But here's the thing. We will always have some state inmates, and those are called CIs. So when they go from, from district court to circuit court and they get sentenced, they will be with us. The state has 45 days, but they never do it in 45 days to figure out their schedule or their level of, of inmate. So to decide if they need to go behind the fence or if they can stay in a jail. So we would still have 30, I think we average between 30 and 35 CIs every month. So we okay. would still have some money. We'd still have seat state inmates, but we wouldn't have, wouldn't be holding them long term for those that I mean, five I think, years or less. I think, and I believe it was your idea of saying we'll guarantee you X amount of beds from a couple different counties. I mean, it doesn't seem like state inmates is the way to go. I mean, I know there's it's money coming in, but start the negotiations, you know, however, to see if you well, can start here's talking. Here's the problem I'm in. I have 80 beds on the state side that I would not I may not be able to use because of their classification levels. So my jail is not set up to be efficient because it's it's cut up mm -hmm. and spread out to have a lower number of staff. And then I would lose 80 beds that I couldn't use because of the classification levels. Okay. So that, that's some issues in the, with the existing facility. It's almost impossible. That's why we want to do the upgrade to help eliminate some of these considerations that hamstring us as we move forward. Then, if we do the renovations, which we we're back on the... <coughs> that we could get past that. And we really need a 30 year, we need a five year, a 10 year, or a five year, 15 and a 30. We need a, we need to think, instead of just keep kicking the problem down to the next court, to the next jailer, we, we need to have a long range plan. You're not gonna be here for 30 years? I don't plan. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. What's Garrett County doing? I, I don't know, I know they had a contract with I guess with Lincoln they and Jessamine County, they, they, they had a contract. And I think somebody <laughs> said they well, they ran the red in the paper that I guess Lincoln County has given them a 30-day 30 30, notice. 30 notice. Now, yeah. I have spoken with their jailer, and, you know, he, he said, he goes, he wouldn't have a problem housing inmates over here. Of course, it would be up to the judge and their fiscal court. So, so there's Garrett County. Who knows what's going to happen with Lincoln County? And then, like I say, Washington County has reached out to me and asked about housing some inmates. Are so, we seeing supply and demand play into some of this? Mm -hmm. I do, but you got to think we're the only jail yeah. that will be. And once Lincoln County goes away, we're pretty much the only jail in this area. Lincoln's going to go away. It's going to go away. Because Anderson County goes to Shelbyville. Uh, I take that back. It would be Lusted, Marion, Mar and Casey. But, yeah. you know, it, the counties that touch yeah. would be. So, so Mary there. And Casey and Boyle would be the only ones that have judges. It'd be a good idea to go to have them. I'm just saying that I. Well, Mercer, because of partnership. I'm, I'm not saying I go for it, but just sitting here thinking, uh, would it be uh, cost saving if, if about four or five jails went together and built a big regional jail? Hmm. There's different standards for it. So, if, if you're calling it a regional jail, that I'm means about five counties. You right. Take, uh, the surrounding counties were the hub. Right. And uh, looks like it cut down on. The, and I know it's going to cost a lot of money, but it could. Save but you a could lot pay for it. You know that yeah. way easier. The only downside of that is if you look at, and this is not. I mean, it's just been a bumpy road. But if you look at the relationship we've had with Mercer, it's not always been good. So that's just two counties working together. You add three more into that, you're going to have three different fiscal courts work. I mean, yeah, five fiscal courts trying to work together. 
Well, you, 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 you wouldn't have fiscal courts involved that way. You'd have, well, I understand the way it works. You'd have a you wouldn't have really have a jailer. You'd have a director. Am I correct? There, there's two ways to do it. The, the, the model I would recommend run the jails is that the other counties would be clients or customers, yeah. not partners. It would be a Bull County jail who houses inmates for other counties, and you say we're going to charge this much per day. You cover the medical. Or you can kind of do what Mr. Sammons is talking about, create a regional jail authority, which is by KRS, it's a whole different animal. So the jailer would, would not go away. He just wouldn't be involved with the jail. The jailer would go be a, uh, this is by KRS. The jailer would go trying, be. That's where you're trying to get to, where you don't have to go in. Is you, right? Well, I, no, really, I love doing what I do because every day is a challenge. But, you know, the jailer would kind of go be a bailiff for circuit court. On a grand scale, I think Magistrate Sammons is on to something here because the two major jails that we uh, visited last year, one was brand new, one was opening up, um, the state-of-the-art facilities that those have become really do lend themselves to a regional jail operation. And parlaying that much out over a half a dozen counties uh, would hit our taxpayers a heck of a lot less. And my great concerns are with the outdated construction of the jail that we have, which apparently was state of the art 20, 25 years ago, um, I think some of our critical liabilities uh, would be wiped off the table. I'm still confused. So the other courts wouldn't have a say in the jail? They would be part. They wouldn't be partners. They would be customers. Yeah. In, that would have to be in the regional. Out. Well, if you if you do a regional jail, then you're going to have a board made up of everybody from those counties that's, who you're going to hope can get along and work toward the same that's goal. That's what I'm getting at. Or if you do, we're going to be a Boyle County Detention Center and we're going to house for several different counties you know and, and they just pay the bill. That's they, they kind of pay the, the way bill. I would... That cuts out a lot of the other problems. I like that. I like that approach. Yeah. yeah. Like that approach yeah. And I, I do too. I, I like that approach too. I like the customer. Approach. Yeah, I don't... I mean, we, and that's kind of where I went back to. We kind of don't always see eye to eye with Mercer. You know, you have a, a jail committee, you know, with three other counties, a total of five. That's going to be, whew. And, you know, and I've talked to sheriffs from all over the United States, running to them for different things, and they everybody says Kentucky has the best system. Where they separated the sheriff and the jailer's office and made two constitutional. They're like, we would give anything if our states had we're done that. that we're the only state that does it, and everybody loves it. And, you know, this gives people in their community to say to have an elected official working for them, you know, it just gives them another opportunity to have that representation. Okay. But moving forward, Judge, I do, you know, hope that we can we can start putting this back up to the front because yeah, well, it, if not, we're we're just setting ourselves up. We had a, we had a committee meeting earlier with EMS and some others, and, and recently we we're. Kind of getting re-energized on trying to move the ball down the field to free up the space for rehabilitation and i'm hopeful within the next 30 days or less that hopefully you know it depends on a lot of things but if we can get back to the press center carol and start re-energizing some conceptual dis discussions to move forward with renovation in place and you know it doesn't happen overnight but we got to move everybody out that we want to move out to free up that space of opportunity to allow movement in there as construction goes up but we're working on that back on the top front burner and you know one of the things i would recommend as well is instead of building like what we have now where we have a secure side and then a, a less secure side build the whole thing secure so 15 20 years down the road if, if everything changes again you're in a better situation to house inmates or move it so you don't lose beds. Like right now, if you know if we took out the state, well, I'm going to lose, I'm going to have 80 beds sitting empty, and I'm going to have another side of the jail that's completely over capacity. So recalling, recalling that last year when we made our uh, visits, one of the jails had literally moved all the women to another jail. What percentage of our, what complement of, of prisoners do we average women to men? Oh, <sighs> 20%, 15, 15, 15, 20%. You know, here's the thing. We, we would run about normally 25 women. During last year, well, the, when we were up to 400, we were running 100. Back back to the judge and, and uh, Magistrate Sammons' comments, uh, we'll have renovation costs if this 
I have a plan that's in front of her now, or this concept uh, were to come to fruition, we will have expended a good bit of money right, right now, right where we are. But in the long-term view of a regional jail of Magistrate Samuels, then we could shift and have the men's jail and then our current jail for women. And, and uh, our investment in the retro for now would pay off in the long run. And the judge and I have had this conversation, you know, how do you, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Well, let's start up the front, and that gives us that entire piece of property that we already own that's paid for to, to build, rebuild, or do whatever we need to do. So let's say if we're going to build another wing, okay, let's start with the first one, we'll pay for it, then let's come down the side adding the new structure. So this way we're not having to pay another county to house our inmates to tear the old building down to rebuild. Then all we'd have to do is move them over, tear that building down. So that's what I was talking about, a 30-year plan. Let's, let's break it up into chunks so it's not so hard on the taxpayers. Here's, here's a feeling that I have. It's just a thought. I think there'll be some changes in the judicial system oh, I do too. that will play a part in our pieces of the puzzle that we're going to put together. Do you hear that on your side at your meetings? That... I think so. Of course, I don't know what the statistics. I was in a meeting yesterday and someone had brought this up. I don't know what the, you know, the, all the people they let out. I don't know how much crime increased or decreased or did it stay the same? You know, I don't know those numbers, but I'm sure they'll be letting those numbers out. I'm sure somebody will have that information let it out soon. Well, I so, think it went up because, like, it's the same people that we let out. Saw two or three more times. Quentin. Well, that would be the same even if we hadn't had COVID. You know, it's the same It's the same 20% that cost us the 80% of, you know, the budget, I think. But I know one of the things that's in this the, the bill is they're looking at doing <laughs> more video court. So they've allocated money in that to everybody would have the same system because, you know, we do our judges here. We do Mercer County plus the inmates we house for other counties all over the state. We have to coordinate with them to set up time for court to do video. Um, so so I think that's yeah. going to be a big change. That was something they touched on. And then I don't know if they said the same thing the week before you all were there, but uh, Attorney General Cameron mentioned, you know, working on, you know, reform and in the judicial yeah. process and, and warrant process and other things. It, it, was video. Also, it was also mentioned, and I don't remember which which speaker it was, but he said, be careful in your planning of what you think you're going to need down the road. Mm -hmm. He just yeah. kind of threw that out there. Yeah, that was the jailer from, from Oldham County. Yeah. Mike Simpson. Yeah, Mike Simpson that said that. Just be just be careful. He don't said. commit to too much. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's why if we do it in steps, we're, we're not setting, you know, we're not setting ourselves up for failure. Yeah. And and I'll tell you, the video court part of it, I love, one, it's cheaper for the county, and two, there's less chance of contraband that are coming back in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's safer yeah. for the inmates, it's safer for my staff, and it's cheaper for the community. So. Now, as we go through this, yeah, I, I, I probably, the jailer and I will probably have some dialogue with surrounding counties to see if they want to commit as a customer base in a long-term, you know, 10-year uh, arrangement or five-year arrangement to give us some stability for the bond issue as we go forward to so know what we have to play with and what's not going to be playing with. And it, the thing, too, you know, when we, when Chris does our contracts, you know, we could put a 30-day clause in there like they had. If something happens, then we could tell a county, hey, we're going to give you 30 days. We can no longer house your inmates. Yeah. So that way we don't get tied in. Yeah. I think all of the counties will have a basic history of what how many beds they normally, you know, on average need and use, and that's where I'm thinking in this pro forma. In order to build the pro forma, you'd have to have them commit to. In Gary you know, County, X basically the same beds. as Mercer County, because that's one of the questions I ask him: yeah. how many inmates they usually house there, and he said anywhere from from 30 to 45, or you know, is about where they're running. Yeah, we can get them to each commit to you know a base number of beds, and then obviously go up over that would need it, but if they have a, you know, that where they can budget and know they've got to pay for this many beds. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. And we, and we can budget and make our payments. You know, they, we may say, like, if they normally house 35 beds or 35 inmates, but they'll guarantee 50, we can give them a little better rate. You know, there's some things we could do to work with them to make it good for 
mutually good for both counties. Right. Right. Okay. No. So you know, I, what's what's going to be the next step? Because I'm getting a lot of emails, a lot of you know people see me and say, "Hey, where are we at with the jail? You know, is this? Do we need to? Are we going to do? We need to reinstate the CJ." CC, CJC, yeah. the CJC that, that we had that we shut down when COVID hit, or any desire to set up a committee to kind of get this moving forward? I think it would be excellent to, to, to take uh, the detention center committee and uh, 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 let's see what else. What other we could have form a whole separate committee to, to move the, the the planning of it forward. But it ought to be to include the, the detention center community right. that are there every day. But I would like to add about four or five people to work there daily, not daily, but frequently with the and, and I think at some point we should reinstate the CJCC because that's mental health. All those people from that board, you know, they, they'll need, I think they need How to be a part of it. Just extend the invitation open back up to, to uh, ASDV or however we do that. We could start. Um, because I, I think the public needs to be involved in this because it's their jail yeah. and I think they need to have say so because it's their tax dollars and I think you know that was a good idea and I think that was one of the positives that come out of doing the study because it, it opened up people it, it gives the public a better chance to understand what's really going on and what we're dealing with that's that's my opinion it, it, it also addresses the mental health side of this which I think is an important part of the puzzle too well, in the re-entry, which I think re-entry, re-entry is going to be the future corrections. Oh, I do too. I do too, and I believe in that strongly. But I, I want I want our Mercer County uh, people to be involved in this in this discussion. Going so I think the next joint jail meeting we need to talk about if we need to reinstate. But I, I do agree. I so think we need to have our jail committee and more. Them. Yes. Mercer County. Yeah. So. Go ahead. So we need to have some sort of planning committee to to take care of the aspect we talked about earlier regarding where we're going to move that's part of ems so that's part of that way it's not all on your shoulders not all on julie's shoulders well, yes i was asking the judge can we just get some direction if is that the priority to focus on getting a place for ems yes yeah I think if it, it is, is then we can run with that and work i think it is yeah I think I, much we so. discussed it this morning in our committee meeting that yeah. it's very much a, a needs to be needs to happen ASAP. Yeah. Now that we're kind of coming out of COVID, we had to kind of put a lot of things on pause, but we're going to start playing catch up. So let's let's focus on that piece the we talked about that earlier. That property we looked at. Yeah. Saying this. Let's. General, if we can get to it anywhere close to what was on that piece of paper. Yeah. Let's go ahead and just do it. Then we'll call a special court session to discuss it. Yeah. The, 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 that helps me because I've got some inquiries back asking, do we have permission to discuss it? Yes. And so I wanted yes. to. Do you need a motion for that? Yeah, I would like to. Uh, or do we want to? Uh, a motion made to discuss uh, land uh, acquisition. acquisition to help facilitate movement of the facilities to free up the opportunity for the jail, which we need. We would move EMS, public works. Maybe animal control, maybe uh, uh, environmental services to another location to free up that upgrading uh, of the jail out there on the spot. It just give us permission to, to talk to people about doing things. Does anybody have any questions on that? No. You, you go leave waste management out there. What no. He's had environmental no, no. services. No, waste waste management. Environmental services. I'm changing the name on you as part of the packet here later on. So you think about moving animal control with? With this together, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes, they, in doing this, and, and don't need Julie because I'm going to impose on you for this. In doing this, with the sensitivities of budgets right now, I think we'd have to get something out to the public so that they understand that these are vital services that will help us move out so that we can better amortize the public's tax dollars in the retrofit of the jail. And I think if we don't do that, they're going to say, my gosh, they're going to do another bond issue, and it's going to be more taxes on us. So I think we really have to communicate on the front end so that, yes, at, you don't know my years. Uh, of okay, so when we, when we start paying double for stuff because we've announced everything that we're doing, that's really going to be yeah, well served on the tax right. dollars. That happened at the airport. Someone got wind that we wanted to expand the airport. I'll talk with Julie and the judge. Yeah, that'd be great. 
I think the message is we have a crisis at the jail looming, and so you've given us direction to so find a solution. Yeah, I'm trying to find a solution. Exactly. That's what the motion is. Was there a second to? I second. Uh, a second, a, a very short second Thank to Magic you. Collins' motion for us to, to enter the negotiation, or to not negotiation, discussions with people to advance the ideas and concepts. And someone made a good idea that you should be on the agenda each week. I mean, each each meeting to make sure this stays at the forefront. And this this is, right. this stays right there. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, any other discussion on that motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I would like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Good. That right. brings one uh, question to mind on uh, acquisition of uh, more property and so on. Uh, you know, we're we're right at the point we ought to be able to move in on part of the old fireground property. And, We've done anything on that lately? Uh, we had a we had a committee meeting earlier today, and and Phil, uh, I will say that I don't do it monthly, but I've done it extremely frequently. I put that before the city as something I would like to see to come to a discussion point, to come to and draw a conclusion. Right. Swap here, swap there, do something. They have shown no interest at all in the last year and a half <clears throat> in moving on that so, so we're, we're moving we're going we're going to take and move on and see if they come back to us maybe we'll put up a, a fence around our acreage there or something i don't want to we uh why don't we consider putting a fence around our acreage and putting the dog pound right in the middle of the <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later oh, we'll I'll talk bet, about I'll that later. That, well, not, it's not a terrible idea we already own it <laughs> but that get your attention three acres we can put stuff there let's put environmental services right there yeah okay. uh, that's a good place to put it thank you all right. thank you all thank Thanks. you judge i mean jay all right am i up next you are <laughs> do we have a guest that wants to be part of this conversation i don't have anybody that's we're not inviting anybody no. else to be part of it. No. You just asked? No, we haven't invited anybody. Really? This is, let them in. Gentlemen, I hear it's fine to get in. We don't have anybody on the agenda. Nobody on the agenda is going to be. Uh, Do I know who it is? It's the attorney that sent us a letter regarding uh, Parker's place. He wants to be part of the uh, conversations on, on any animal control ordinances. I didn't know about this, Jerry, but I'd say it might just be helpful to have him in here. <clears throat> you can't, not you can't bring agenda. him in. He's not on the agenda. He's not on the agenda. We don't, we don't talk to him. Uh, that be I'll, on the agenda. I'll, well, I'll, the gentleman from Republic Services wasn't on the agenda. The second gentleman, but we let him in. So. But Republic Services was on the agenda. It says Greg Butler, Republic Services, yeah. didn't say... Did not say an additional person, so. I'll play the court. <clears throat> what do you think? I don't think it's a legal issue at all, especially since, uh, as uh, Pastor Cullen pointed out, we had another person in here who wasn't listening. And, and I really think it might help put things to bed if there's a better understanding of the remarkable work that uh, Julie has sent us. Uh, and I hope everybody's ready. I understand. That. And I believe, I believe the, the letter we received he requested to be part, so that wasn't he. You want to read the letter? It's in your packet. No, it's in the packet. Yeah. I'm just going back to see which part. I did not see. I don't yeah. remember it being in there. The question. Oh, no, we don't talk, talk, talk to talk, do we? Let me see here. I think this is a legal question because we will be challenged Get somewhere over. down the road mm -hmm. on whatever we decide. I suspect my suspicion. Yeah, I think because it's an, it is an open public meeting, even though we are limiting access right now it does create a kind of a weird circumstance so that's why we refer to council i think the judge ought to make that oh the tenants is closed to the public but, okay but whatever you guys want it's our option what do you recommend counselor it's totally up to you i really think it'll put some things to bed hey well derek's saying Go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, okay. I talked to I like the and I told them that you know it's so I'm coming to talk. I'm like, what's closed to the public? Okay. We're good. 
So I think before you even came back. That's that's. I would yeah. like for the minutes to closely verbalize what was said in this discussion. This past five minutes, future reference that it was discussed whether or not we would allow him in or not. I totally concur, and I hope we're taping so that it can can be verbatim. It's being taped. It's being taped. Okay. Here. Okay. If we'll just jump right in and go to page, I believe it's sixteen of uh, Agent Ordinance eight forty two. Sixteen. Page sixteen. Section B. Okay, and going off of the comments at the last meeting, um, we've addressed agriculture, the concern about agriculture uh, at the very bottom. We've also removed the word pasture because that implies agriculture. We've uh, we've removed all indications of what kind of noise we're talking about. We've added for an extended period of time. We've defined what an extended period of time is. That would be 20 minutes of non-stop animal noise that is witnessed by our staff. Our staff would come out and give a warning to the 20 minutes of non-stop Parking. If there is a second complaint, it cannot just be from the same person. We would require two additional households to complain before we would make a second citation. The citation period of time is 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. And again, our officer has to witness 20 minutes of non-stop parking or howling or whatever. The fine is what it's always been, $10 to $25. No change, from the no change on that. So we have removed agriculture, clarified that. We're responding to Magistrate Ellis's question of duration, decibels, or des distance. We've gone with duration, which is something that I think we haven't, it's the only thing left that we haven't looked at. And um, that's the best I could come up with. I feel like it's the fairest. Um, one other note is, is I think somebody asked me about 10 miles down the way you hear a dog bark. There's no way our animal control officer could say that it comes from that point. I mean, they have to see it and hear it for 20 straight minutes and honestly, I don't know an animal that barks for 20 straight minutes unless there's something wrong with it. So without stopping, drinking, breathing. <laughs> so, I mean, it would have to be an extreme circumstance. You don't know dogs very well. <laughs> well we got one. That blood us bark 24-7. I guess yeah. questions? My, my question is, does this section B and this noisy animals, hmm? does this apply to kennels or just individual owners and of dogs. Any, any. Because animal. I guess the problem I have with that is that, you know, to me it's one thing if, if you have one, two, three dogs that you own and care for yes. and they're yappers and barkers and, and they're your neighbor and that's, you know, can be a problem. A kennel, just by the nature of a kennel, I mean, you're going to have barking dogs. And so, to me, this business has gone through the proper zoning they have. procedures, and I just see this being more applicable to an individual neighbor that owns an animal. Which is what we always had. And I just don't see this, this section, to me, is separate from a, a kennel section, because otherwise our, our animal control officer is going to get called every day. And they do. They do get calls. They just don't have any way to measure it. No, we don't. We have no, no measurables. Stand. Yeah, five minutes. So, minutes. I've, so I just don't. Because again, it's always going to be different dogs. It is. That are barking at a kennel versus, and that's where you know some some days they may have more, just for lack of a better way to say it, more yappy dogs than other days. Mm -hmm. And dogs just by nature of being 
in a space with other dogs are they're going to bark. bark. They are going to bark. bark. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a still relatively young dog that thankfully at this point in time doesn't bark a lot, but when he's around other, yeah. she, when she's around other dogs, she's more inclined to bark. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't bark at So what standard do you recommend? Well, again, I think that this is a good standard for, not for kennels though. So I, I don't know that you can have a, a standard for barking at kennels because it's the nature of a kennel. And the kennel is a business mm -hmm. that's going to have barking dogs. And this business has gone through all the proper right. channels. And everybody has had a, a voice in making their case against this. And it's been approved to be a kennel in this location. I'd like to. So I don't know what we can do Well, I've written this for the 24. There are more than one kennel. Yeah. No, I, I, it, yeah. Let me jump. Don't be any judge. Uh, I very much appreciate what uh, Magistrate. Jay. Jay. <laughs> I'm still talking. Uh, Magistrate Gay is, is speaking to here. On the other hand, um, when we read the attorney letter that was gotten, I think this has to be a holistic process. If you have a neighbor 24 7, then you do have a legitimate complaint and you can probably get two more individuals. I'm a little disappointed on the measurements, uh, but uh, Julie has addressed that in a very good way um, about distance and all, all the rest of it. But if we don't address it holistically for the 2024 entities that exist out there, and for my next door neighbor or Phil's next door neighbor for whom he filed a complaint a year or so ago, um, I think it has to be county border to county border, whether it's an individual or any of the myriad forms of kennel operations, I'll say it in a broad, broad way, as the attorney would address that it has to have parity, equal um, uh, application. It have different uh, applications of a standard for uh, yeah. commercial as opposed to a private. So I think we well, should I, I agree. Just take it all in. I'm, I'm saying, I think we're saying the same thing. I'm just saying that a, ken a kennel by the nature of the business is going to have barking dogs. But Most will it them. have the duration and the other things plus the fact that uh, very adroitly it's been built in that first complaint comes with, with a way to it. Then it has to go to a second level of two more people who will swear to a duration of 20 minutes or more and be under the Is it two more people or under the umbrella of perjury. It's one more person, not two more. Oh no, it's two more. Julie? It absolutely is two separate individuals from the first one. Read the language. Two here. additional complaints from different Wait, households. See? Two additional complaints okay. from right. different. Yeah. So that being the case. It would be three. You come to me, Phil, you come to me and, and say, will you join me on this? And I'll say, in all honesty, I cannot put my signature on that because, yeah, they barked, but we were headed out and we were on the front porch 10 minutes before we headed out. But I don't know whether they were barking after I left. So I'm going to have a hard time putting my signature down that they barked 20 minutes. May I remind everybody that the owner of any business decides where they're going to put their business and how it may be a positive or a negative for whoever surrounds them. That's a decision made by the owner and it should be part of the business of a business decision. This, this also, I like to remind everybody, we have what, 24 kennels? 24 establishments that we would be licensing that, that I've found so far. The, the, the letter that you referenced indicated that we were targeting. I don't think that's the case here because this pertains to every, every kennel. Anything we do now pertains it does. to But we are not targeting just at one kennel. Like I, that, I agree 100% on this. That, that, but that term was used, okay? Uh, That's changed with the new draft. And it was interesting that Magistrate Gay said, and this kept, you know, uh, his, his maybe, words, I'm, maybe I'm looking at this ordinance was on the books for since 16. But not and, it had, and it was enforceable, but it's not nobody ever, but it, it's, been, it's, it's never been clarified. Been, been it's, what we're doing is clarifying yeah. something that has already been on the books for five plus years. Yeah. What, and there's uh, language I put in, but I'm satisfied where we are, I believe. 
I have a question yes, on, uh, which I don't think it's been addressed, but not this morning anyway. Um, if you got a kennel next door to you, no. what's the deal you're worried about? Are you worried about more about the dog barking, or are you worried about the stink? Think about it. Well, you, you know, if you got a large kennel, uh, I can tell you for a fact that this past Monday a week ago, about a quarter late, we were coming from Lexington, and just as I came over the hill, close to the First Baptist Church, there's something hit it. Me and my wife, and I'm driving my truck, and windows rolled up, and air conditioner going, and I'm going to tell you, it'd take your breath. So I don't. I can put up that little dog bark in a while, but I sure as heck can't put up that stink. There, there, there are other enforcement uh, aspects and avenues that we have at our disposal to address that. On the books. Because on the books already that don't have to be in this ordinance. Okay, there, there are other right. ordinances, not ordinances, but there's other regulations out there that can address that aspect of things. And that's, and that's, I guess, my point, because I'm not trying to single out this case, but I do know it is a case that is... This is the case that brought this to the board. I know, right. And so... Because we're not getting complaints about the other 23. Let's be honest. It, we we are discussing this because of one particular... Well, but in, in the point out that the judge... Yeah, in, in, in judge you had, nobody before the 7th of this month, have you heard from any other kennels that... Not a single one in the county, period. And this is, we've talked about this for several months, so they knew others had the opportunity. Not a single one. Not a single one. But, but I guess my point is, is, that I'm trying to make, is that this is, this part of it is, it should be, being a, a kennel business should be handled through other processes that we have in the county, meaning our planning and zoning processes to where they can and cannot locate. Well, that's, that they nobody else can open a kennel in only in agriculture with a variance, whatever they yeah. call it now. Conditional use permit. Yeah. Um, and that's in your zoning ordinance. So there's a chart and you can look down through. Yeah. So, um, that, so that's so, the part that handles this because I guess my, my concern is putting, if, if I just think that this should be, the kennel should be excluded from the noisy animal section because of the nature of that business they're going to be barking dogs in a kennel and i don't see that you can include noise i just think that at no time should shall an owner or guardian keep maintain or harbor and to me if it's an owner or guardian that means to me that that's the person that has owns custody. that dog has or custody, has custody, of, custody that dog. of it yeah and so that in itself separates it from the kennel business i just don't think this section applies to a kennel business. You had a note where if you wanted to include kennel, you probably need to add entity. Yeah, because right now it doesn't it, even, it, it doesn't include a kennel it, in entity, there. In other sections it does. Entity could be not just a kennel, I mean, it could be. But I don't think it should include a kennel in there. Calls animals, no. Your other option is to strike noise completely, pass your kennel inspection report, pass your complaint form. So we have a, a process for other areas. I mean, that's where we're at. If, if yeah, that's where we're at. I, I don't know what else to give you. Noise I is really the biggest don't. problem I have because yeah. I, I mean, let's be honest. If we're going after residential people, we better we better get ready not only to build a bigger jail but a bigger uh, uh, humane society because people are going to start turning their dogs in once once they get that first or second. Yeah. Uh, you know, ticket or whatever. They're like, oh, I can't stop this dog. It's a dog. It barks. I mean, yeah. come and by my house and walk in front of my house. My little one-year-old puppy uh, 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 is going to run back and forth on that electric fence, and she's going to bark. If, so, if we're excluding this, you I Stand just, there for 20 minutes, she will. Well, right. Yeah, I but just, that's provoking, and that's another section Julie built mm -hmm. into this. That, 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 would, be, that, that, would, that would discount yeah. the barking if it was provoked. But, it can't, but that, if, that's, that, that doesn't make any sense. Because the animal control person would have to be there to witness it, so that that there's going to provoke the dog, you know. It some of these things aren't 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 adding up. 
Well, like she says, we're at the point, guys, we can just strike out the red and leave it what the noise the animal, what it was in, in 2016. Well, you got a complaint form and you got a registration form. Uh, but then that would strike the duration. Yep. It would. That would it's it, all that subjective. Would not be healthy at you got to have a measurement stick, I think. Yeah. And I think you've got to remember that you're really protecting what Section B says uh, that any disturbance to, that hurts the peace and quiet or result in serious annoyance or interference with the reasonable use and enjoyment of neighborhood of neighboring premises. I think we all want to protect the neighbors. I think we, uh, I would like to think that we do. Uh, neighbors should be enjoy the be able to enjoy the quality of life in their residence. And that all and, pulls and, the two together with the twenty minutes. And when you disturb that, or you don't protect the neighborhoods and the people in their ho homes, I think we're not seeing the big picture. To satisfy Magistrate um, Gay, well, can we can we put in here then? Can we put trains? Can we put other things that create loud noises that are disturbing to neighbors? Honking? Like, what, what are the things that can we put in here? Like, cars going off at night? Uh, animal ordinance. Uh, I mean, let's, animal. let's just change the ordinance, then make it a noise ordinance. I, I'd like to hear sentiment on the word entity to satisfy management gaze, and, and that would be easy, Julie, to put that in there. Correct. Well, again, I'm, I'm not wanting to put it in. No, there. he wants to exclude that. I, I want to exclude yeah. kennels. Yeah. yeah. I just don't think that a kennel We're not going can control this. barking animals because, yeah. to, to Magistrate Cohen's point, you know, if, if somebody walks by, his dog's going to bark. If another dog is in is in a kennel with another dog, they're going to bark. There's nothing the kennel owner can do to stop that barking. That's just part of the business um, that they're in, and, and that's the business that they've chose to be in, and, and they legally have the right to operate their business there because they've done everything they were supposed they, to do. They chose to be in that business, correct. But where you put your business is your decision. Right. But, they, so, but they've done so all the things you, they need to do you have to, consider, to put their business there. You have to consider the, the pluses and the negatives of where <laughs> you open your business. Chris. And I guess here. once they've opened their business, what can we do? Because they've legally put their business. Right. They there. make that decision before they put it in of the pluses and the minuses. That's what you do as a business person. Right. I guess it's their value to the complaints that we have received. I think that's what we're discussing here. That was going to be my next Is question. It, do we have a petition of like 100, 200 people that are, or, or how many how many complaints have we received that this has taken up four months of our time to, to keep going back and forth on something that we have yet to be able to agree on anything at all? Well, I read your letters at the last meeting, and I won't go back into that again from different neighbors. How many? That probably tend to be most effective because in proximity, they're the closest to the, to that to a particular business that has created this. I think there's been great care taken to address a very uh, positive position of consideration to both public interest and to uh, potential interest of businesses that there is a test, a litany test of what is reasonable to be a nuisance or a noise. And where you have one complaint, first complaint, go and, and ACO says, you know, here's your warrant. Second complaint, you get two more people and you get a measurement standard. And different people have different opinions on the on the effectiveness or the potential effectiveness of the measurement standard, but it doesn't encumber us with calibrated equipment to do decibels. It doesn't encumber us. It's uh, something that I felt strongly about, but but uh, that that's another whole potential headache legally. To have calibrated equipment and be checked and determined in a court, you know, afterwards if it was effective on the date, just like temperature measurements. I say before we do anything. I mean, the letter that we received from the law firm has asked if we've even had hired a sound engineer to 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 validate this issue. I mean, have we, I mean we're we're all just sitting here saying, oh, we've got these complaints and you know whatever, and you know, have we gone the route of doing due diligence? of hiring a sound engineer. 
You know, and, you know, there's nothing in this or there's nothing that we're doing that would preclude a civil action, correct? That's right. So, so that still is out there for the complainants, singular or plural, uh, that complainant individually would still have their option of civil action um, without the other two that I think are very important to what Julie has added in here. We're not going over with this. No, not we're a, no further along than Mark Wolverine. No, I mean, everybody's got their own opinions, what? but we're not. Several we're other not, important things have taken a back burner. We're not doing anything with this. On something that I don't see any of us agreeing to. Can we pass the inspection process and the uh, business license in the complaint form? Are you it comfortable with the it? inspection report and the uh, complaint report? I just think there's so much new good meat that helps the neighbor, that helps the individual with two or three dogs, that helps all the 2024 counts in what has come forward specifically, but all throughout the document on page 16. Well, and that's where, and again, I'm, I'm good with the document. I think the document actually is good, but I just, want, I just want to make it clear that the section B does not currently include kennels that's why i would put the as word a, entity in there as, but that's where i again i don't think it should be because i don't think kennels. i think that's the question are yeah. you include let's just don't say kennels i mean you know veterinary places at home right you know i don't think it says kennels does it say kennels well no. there are other sections no i'm just kennels. that's why entity would be better if that's what you are choosing to do i'm not saying do it or don't do it whatever you vote on i will amend it accordingly yeah, and it gives equity it gives equity, it gives equity to anything. the process with that word i'm just pointing out stuff I'm i think it i think it ties you down more than you really need to be tied but i even have the word entity or any other description of a of, of piece of infrastructure or lack thereof if the noise is a noise it's inside a building outside a building or, or, or a mile away it, it is what it is i you know uh I don't know why you want to tie it down to an entity. Is what is an entity? Is it a person? It was in business. Beyond it was the other words plus entity, correct, Chris? Right now it says owner or guardian. So or like any what, other entity. What Master Gay is saying is he thinks it should just be, be just people. You people know, then. and I'm fine with that if that's what you all choose. But if you're wanting to include a business, I think that you know, an entity uh, ought to be in there. This, I if mean, you want to do that, I'm, you I'm sorry. No, I can't move past the inspection report because just looking at this, number 14, is the kennel sufficiently isolated to prevent complaints? That that's, that's if you look at the one in, on under your agenda, it's, yeah. it's out. Your agenda. Yep. Why don't we, uh, yeah. you know, we discussed this like, uh, well, we on 14, that's what Magistrate Cullum said for four no, months. On the inspection form. Oh, yeah, on the inspection form. We can discuss this for another four months and not getting where I think we're all just going to accept Julie's original recommendation and move on with it. Make a motion. I'll Before second. I make that, that motion. motion, I'll, I'll make that motion. You're talking about the document that you have yes. I see that now. Sorry, I've got yeah. electronic copies. I've got these copies. Yeah. Yes, sir. motion has been made by Major Salmons to accept. Aren't we supposed to get these on Thursday before the any any adjustments before? I'm sorry. We caught that error yesterday, and so I made new copies to no, put understand in the that. Morning. But if I'm reviewing yeah. stuff digitally, yeah. we changed the we changed our meeting, meeting. Mr. Yeah. Cullen. If you remember, yeah. we, we have a new conference. person, and we had no to understand that meeting, so that. it just kind of needed Julie, an extra day or two. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I understand. I'm, I'm just. It's still on there. Uh, yeah, but you've got a new document somewhere. Wait, she wait, not, wait, had, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm just trying to understand. I thought we had to have stuff in by a certain date, so we had time to review. So if it's not in by a certain date, we shouldn't even be discussing it. See, here's the thing. Isn't, wasn't that what we said before? You had to have stuff in by, on, on the old schedule, you know, if we were meeting on Tuesday, you had to have it in by Thursday. End of day Thursday. End of day Thursday, and it couldn't be discussed because we have not had sufficient time to review it. You got it, but you was out of town. I, I got this when? When did I get this? When was this, when was this put given to me? Today. Oh, I, I got it for three days ago. 
The, oh, you got the new it. updated form? You got that that they just handed it out today? Pack. It came in our packet. In our packet. Yeah. I'm talking. Okay, so you I have the same on the floor. You got the old. I have. Version. I have the packet that was sent yeah. to everybody, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is what. You got what, the old version in your packet. Electronically, this is what was sent yes. in the packet that you they're got all the discussing. the old version in your packet. And when was this version. updated and given out to everybody? Tuesday. Probably Tuesday. Tuesday. It, it's been sitting here for you to look at today. I'm sorry. No, no, I made no. a mistake. It's, no, no, no. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I'm not, definitely an important change. And it's, it's out. Transition the new staff and everything. I can understand. Yeah. No, I can understand it, too. It to get You're yeah. not blaming anybody. I'm not either. blaming anyone. I'm just trying to understand to, to if there's a process that we have sufficient amount of days, but if you're telling me that everyone else was mailed theirs or everyone else picked theirs up, then it was my fault, then it's my fault. But so you know, everybody got the clean one. I just laid it here. I didn't think it was gonna be an issue to hand delivered, or I would have if I was actually an issue that had been yeah. eliminated from a previous trip. Yeah, she just you just got the the one you got last time, I believe, is the one you got today, but I'd have to go back and read my packet to confirm that. If you want that's, me to, that's I will. A nice, no, 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 no. That's a nice change. That's a nice yeah. change. The yeah. Change in fourteen. That helps. Yeah, a lot. I. Positive change. We got a motion on the floor by Sam and Sanctum by Marshall K. Wood on all three documents. What's the motion? On what? All three documents as they are today. Correct. Now we can discuss it since the motion has been made. I don't I think we're trying to put too much pressure on Mr. Stewart, and I'm more of a defender. Why are you looking at me? Uh -huh. <laughs> I think this you know, is a I real good example protection. of the point that you're making is how much work she did putting this together. Yeah. Look at this binder. You've never seen anything like that. I took well, a day yesterday and went through that binder. This is a little different. I think it's overkill on that. <laughs> oh, I did. I'm going there. <laughs> so I, I, I are think. Gentlemen, are you ready to vote? No, I just Question. Said, Go ahead. On one of the words used in there, I mean, if you adopt it, whatever the word incessantly. Um, that's a big word. I, I just think if a better word or words to use would be uninterrupted, non stop, yeah, yeah. Break. Yeah. but that's specifically made in the 20 minutes, right? I mean, so it's, 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 it's nomenclature. I just like, I mean, if you're going to go with all this or whatever, I don't like that word. I like non stop without a break. It's, I like non stop. That, that that works for me. If you if anybody if you want to amend that, I make a motion to amend the amend the, the original uh, motion to yeah. agree with the councilor's yeah. wording, yeah. and another amendment to just don't let the councilor yeah. read any farther. <laughs> this this is only a vote for us to approve this to go to a first reading on an ordinance yeah. amendment. Right. Correct. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Good question. So it's, it doesn't. Go into law and still the second, second reading. Right. reading. It's subject to change until the second reading. So, so that, that's, that should help you. Yeah, question. that's fine. I still want an answer of how many complaints we've received. Nine hundred. No. For the record, that is uh, hyperbole. How many complaints have we received? Because we're setting a precedent that if you if we get four or five complaints for thirty thousand people, we're going to make a change. So, and then. I, I don't know the answer, but I know Ann was getting emails periodically, but I, I don't know. Those know. kind of things we should probably be tracking. And I don't I don't know. She probably would have been yeah. able to tell us. Yeah. Um, but like I say, this is not directed in any one field. Of course, in her business. It, oh, it, it is a result of recent highlighted discussions, yes, but this covers more than just right. one focal point. Right. Okay. Yeah, and I think this protects the right. business because it doesn't apply to a business anyway. It doesn't. Right. All right. Call for question. I'll, uh, we'll do a voice vote. And uh, just do a voice vote. All those in favor of the motion to approve the, the amendments to this ordinance to move it toward a first reading signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed like sign. May I explain my vote? It's parliamentary procedure. You, you I, voted aye. I did, yes. Um, with all the work, as Pastor Cullen has said, that we've done over, I think now, four meetings and countless drafts, uh, there are issues of measurement that I would lobby for, but for the good of the process, 
I'm voting aye. Appreciate that. The motion passes, gentlemen. Thank you for that. And we have we'll have a first reading next court session. It and then the second reading. If we move forward from that, we'll be able were to these included in that motion to yes, sir, move sir. forward? Yes, and I specifically asked if it was all three documents. Thank you, Julie. Couple things in in following up on this. First of all, it is animal control. Wow. Appreciation Week. So let's say thank you to our animal control people. I did not want to say that before we had this discussion. I'm also writing a policy and procedure for our animal control based on this ordinance so they are clear, which I'll get Chris to look over, how to do this. I think you need to see that before July 1 when some of this comes into place. So, And I also plan to make a handbook for the people that we are going to be licensing so they understand what we're trying to do and there'll be everybody will have the same information right. so there's still more work to do but nothing Julie, now you. i know what the thank you, thank you. All thank you. Done. amen thank you Julie. these are all criminal fines or civil no so that yeah. All right. Who who's next? We got uh, Miss Angie's next. Angie, thank you, my dear. Gate guard, door guard. I'm telling you, what, I, I get more stuff coming down here than you went back to my office. That's part of environmental services. So what? <laughs> hey, move, move right. taking care, taking he, care he, of he stuff. He was not friendly. Oh, I did, I did, I did. He was actually very, very rude. I mean, rude. Is he rude to you? No, he was not. He was very <laughs> rude. Very rude. Did you share that? Okay. I'm sorry. You can look on mine. It's just basically, it's just FYI. You. As you know, last year about this time, I brought in a um, composting grant and we approved, you know, to do that. Well, since then, um, we just didn't do it. So I'm basically asking the court for permission to send that money back. It was $143,154.80. I felt that the state needed to know why we were sending it back. You know, this is an organization that I have worked with for years upon years and has been, you know, very good to counties and, you know, and seeing that I am actually, you know, the president of the solid waste coordinators across the state, you know, it's a reflection on that also, several boards. So I composed a letter to send back with our report and uh, they'll send you the legal paperwork, you know, to ask you to send it back when I do the final report. So I sent them a letter, the, a copy of the letters with you there. And I sent them everything that we have endured during this. The judge and I has endured questions, answers, uh, newspaper articles, all the social media, you know, anything that, you know, was part of that. Um, I sent, I'm sending to the state. Because I just, like I send a letter, um, I have never, I have been local government 30 years and I have never encountered such negativity and unwillingness to do something with people not even just trying to understand. But, you know, that's here nor there. But I'm actually asking for you, Judge, to, for everybody to entertain a motion to send the money back. Make a motion. Second. Motion made by Master Short, second by Master Gay to re, uh, return the uh, grant money from the state on, on animal composting. And I think everybody is. Uh, and I need to, I need, I do need to mention that <coughs> we will probably never see it again, any kind of composting project. You know, we'll probably never qualify or see. You know, in composting, long thing, you know, I was going to work with Center College next on. You know their thing, and with North Point, we'll probably never see it. They'll probably be on their own. So, well, and I know that's obviously a concern and an issue, but I do think 
the fact that you're doing the right thing here and sending it back hopefully sends a clear message that we will do the right thing if it doesn't. Well, you, no, they'd make you send it back anyway. It's, it's, it's <coughs> a, a quarterly. No choice. But, but, you don't have no choice. This is yeah, I mean, proactive. Yeah. Okay, any discussion other than that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, like sign. Jerry, thank you. Okay, I also would like to ask the court. Um, I am going to put together a committee for uh, property code maintenance. Um, you know, there's some things we need to look at ordinance wise and code enforcement wise. And I like for it to be, you know, myself. I like to include someone from the health department, yourself, Judge, um, Julie, and Jason, maybe. What is that as a recommendation uh, uh, for, uh, I guess, an ad hoc committee to explore uh, discussions about uh, the uh, property maintenance? We got, yeah, we got like grass, mobile home, things like that yeah. that we need to explore. Uh, is that recommendation okay with the court? If it is, we'll, we'll uh, just. Uh, I'll make a motion if one needs me. Yeah, let's do. Let's just tell me to have it on the record. Yeah, make a second. Okay, motion to move forward with the recommended committee structure to explore the property maintenance codes made by Mr. Cullen, second by Matt Ellis. Any discussion on that? I think this is a movement forward. Um, Angie's done a good job of coming out in my uh, district uh, three or four times at, to look at sites that need improvement. That's um, an understatement. One or two of them. Um, we had, for example, a trailer that took over three weeks, and I didn't call you about this one because it's finally cleaned up, um, but it took over three weeks to flatten it and dismantle it, and I'm talking about a 50-foot trailer, <laughs> um, and I probably should have called you because it was a tremendous eyesore on one of the main arteries, uh, but um, I think we could expedite those kind of things in the future uh, with the work that you offer. Well, I think we just, you know... We need to put something in place to make people, you know, that is, as a solid waste person, that is actually my, something I don't have backup with, is abandoned trailers and that in mobile homes, and it's something that really that needs to be addressed. And dismantle it over a period of weeks. Is even if they well. dismantle it, you're lucky they even dismantle all Easter of morning, I think some of you got the pictures, I was out with the fire department on Persimmon Nub because somebody decided they wanted to light, instead of removing the trailer they just lit it up and uh 6 30 in the morning our uh, fine volunteer staff is away from their family putting out this fire that luckily didn't go any further because it was the winds were blowing it could have could have had a real serious fire right there going right over top of uh the alum springs um convenience center and that Where whole the branches are the debris wooded area it was it could have gotten really bad, but again, if we have stuff like this where we can have people clean it up prior, then then we're it's going to be safe for everyone too. And I have one more thing that we didn't get on the agenda. Um, as you know, all the brush has been taken to Alum Springs. Um, I do have some at Perryville, but they haven't used it. And I'm getting ready to shut that part down. However, time to bring a chipping service in. And th and this is this is bad because Keegan got big eyes at me. So, but we're talking about five thousand dollars a day to chip the, 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 the chip the brush, and we're probably looking at four to five days. <laughs> You're not allowed to burn it. Why? We can, but it's a lot to burn. But that's that. You know, Donnie Sexton. You know, he, he give me the okay, you know, to do that because it's legal. Um, and, you know, he give me the permit to do so. But, you know, when I'd done that last year, I had a woman that about wore me and Donnie out. But, you know, that's okay, too. That's We're that one to call that. versus a huge expenditure. And I well, you may... But I also contacted the city because in the past, the city has always shared that cost with us. So, <clears throat> having that been said... I did talk to Earl, and he assured me that, yeah, they would be willing to go half. But I have that in text message, but this is from the ice storm. From the city. Everywhere. From everywhere. This was everywhere. Of course, the city probably had more than what the county took, to be honest. But, you know, 
And that was nice that it was picked up. It was. It really it was. was nice. Can you do it a little bit a day, or is that just not really feasible? What's that? Well, burning, Burn. Burning. This, no, no, it's feasible. It, yeah. it, it's feasible. It's just going to take a long time. And, and you know, people just keep bringing it in, bringing it in. The city's got their well, self in a mess because, you know, they've offered to pick it up. And the more they pick it up, the more people want to bring the trees <laughs> <laughs> to go back and get it. Yeah. I mean, it's... I've, it, out of hand. I would so, kind of throwing it out there. To see. I'd say there's some places in there at 70 feet deep. Were were we excluded from the uh, the emergency that they were discussing? No, no, this could be recouped. The, the fees. The yeah, that's that's that that Rusty told me. I would probably could could recoup be recouped this. at least 75 percent. Was who was it? Was it Rocky that was talking about yesterday that that several counties were excluded? Excluded. I think that was more the flood. That was flood. That was okay. Flood. Oh, okay. Flood. All right. Flood. Not ice storm. Boyle well, has already been declared in the ice storm. That's what I saw it. That's uh, what I'm check. Declaration. Yeah. I'm with he seems to think that we would uh, get back with it. Fifteen years ago, my next door neighbor bulldozed well over a half an acre. That's a lot. And these were trees, this big around and and smaller. Uh, I helped him, and we got the permit. On his property, on next door, and we did a clean burn, and I emphasize clean burn, which I know we would do as a county, but to save twenty, thirty thousand dollars of taxpayer money when we can legally do it, um, I, I just think we have that option. If we've got the equipment to move a little bit out and do it, and move a little bit more out since it's seventy feet deep, um, the pile we had would have been five times the size of this room or more. And we did a clean burn. Uh, but you, you be, before you say that, though, I understand where you're coming from, and I don't have a problem if that's what everybody wishes. But you may want to go out there and look what you're talking about. I understand. And, and because I, we're talking some... That's why I'm saying as... as um, massive burn. As Mr. K would be saying, move out, move out. Well, move. let's get past the, the 25000 or, or even 30000 it costs to do it. If it's being cut in half and shared... And you have a great probability yeah. of recouping seventy-five percent of it. This is the way to go, I think. Right. It's going to happen quicker in four days or five days, or rather four or five weeks to parcel it out and yeah. burn it, and then you get, get you know. The and they're ready to come in Saturday and set up and start Monday, you know. But you got with, all that with smoke. Keegan's be, permission and everybody. Else. Can we give away that mulch? We can give it away, or we can away. use it for fill, or we can use it ourselves. I make, the motion, I make the motion that we go ahead and do the chipping process. Because, you know, we can we can save $400 a load Second just it. by giving it away or spread on our property or anything out there. Put it on the governor's circle and make the fire spread. There you go. I'll make that motion in a second by short that okay. we, that we go ahead and contract, made the to contract the, the, the for the chipping of the brush. But Did you ask Keegan? He's. I mean. Oh no! Let's ask Keegan <laughs> and pursue that seventy-five money back. reimbursement. Yeah, I'd like that to be part of the motion. We we need to cap it too. Shared with the city. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Shared with the city. Shared with the motion is that we yeah. we share with the city. Capped at how much? How much are we going to spend on? I that? don't. I don't think they they seem to think they won't be after more than five days. They said four to five days. So it, you're talking cap it, cap it twenty five thousand dollars and cap it at seven. Yeah, cap it at an amount. I don't than think we need to cap it. I think we need to leave that up to Andrew's discretion. Oh, I don't think I, I pretty much the guy I met with him yesterday morning. We went out there, and I had actually one of Dwayne's men with me that helps me push it back. And he said himself, he don't. He said he might can get done in four days, but you know, so we he said four to five days. Then bringing it in. Not from Allen Springs, no. no. So we'll, we'll always we'll take it, but I so am going to stop got, it at Perryville. Once we get all this done, well, we're then we're, we're, you we're, going to we're always going to have it. But see, what we've done in the past is we did have a contract with Cox Interiors <laughs> coming in here, and the city would pay like five thousand. I think I'd say you remember that five thousand dollars, and we'd pay five thousand. And once twice a year, they come in here and chip and go. So, so, we're, we're not so I'm going to ask anyway. this gentleman okay. for, you know, see if they would like to maybe get into a con yearly contract where, you know, it's split between the city and county and then yeah. there's no... How much is a chipper? About yeah. 35000 40000 I got one of those models. Most of them bring in big tub grinders. 
Anybody that you just pick up with the excavator or just we went through this one Dumped. time years ago as Magister K would recommend well remember we bought a tub grinder you all probably don't want a tub grinder we paid five thousand dollars for a tub grinder it cost us ten to get rid of it <laughs> <laughs> remember that I think you make that I remember <laughs> probably did you gonna put it off on the garlic <laughs> so, so you and Dwayne can't use a grinder you you would say a a, a a chipper wouldn't be useful not for that much bro no that's a lot of money plus you got the yeah. your staff. responsibility of getting someone hurt all right good i'll say liability insurance on run that chipper it would it would, it would take us a ribbon that we don't have currently access to to do what this okay. company's gonna come i'm just to and cox and curious charge the same thing you know, it, it's not like this company's taking advantage because, you know, you'll get a lot of people that'll, you know, take advantage because they think they're government, you got more money. But, you know, basically... Are we allowed to sell the mulch to sign. commercial businesses? I don't think we can sell it, can we? Hmm. That's a fine line, I don't know. If you could I research could that, because we got... What do we have three different companies in town now that uh, we've got... Uh, uh, McAfee... McAfee uh, we've got a new one just right out across from the Davis properties, and then um, uh, Jeremy. And don't place. know if that worked because you know the city does their leaf farming and makes beautiful mulch, but you know they they can't get rid of all of it either. So yeah. you know it's off the question, question, Judge. Okay, uh, Keegan. In regard to the, the motion, will be to convey that, that that the county and the city share equally in the cost of chipping of the uh, brush pile at Alton Springs and we authorized that and uh, is there anything else that needs to be well, I would like to put in there pursuing that 75 percent yeah but maybe that. that's the second step well I think that's going to happen Most. anyway yeah. as, far, as a matter of administration well, have, have you reached out to our, our other cities as well we've got Junction and Parable that area to see if they would want to chip in on this I can. Yeah, I know you thought you guys like that. I think it'd be nice. I mean, we we do leverage Danville a lot, but I can guarantee that some of this stuff, you know, came from you know oh, yeah. other areas. Come from everywhere. It came from our districts. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's only right to ask the other. But I did leave Perryville open, you know, because of the ice damage. But you know, it's I'm going to close it off now, and you have to. Everybody's going to start bringing it back to Alabama. It's only six miles from Perryville to. Um, anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Discussion? All those in favor of, of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Sure. Thank you. I think I'm done. See. All right. Thank you. Wayne is Thank next. You. See if he's out there. He's out here today. Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, sir. Wayne. Say something. All right, are we good? Yep. Okay, sorry. All right. I thought maybe we were still talking. All right, we'll just go down the list on the on your agenda, and I think there's one item left off, and we will bring that up at the end. Uh, first item on your agenda, again. Uh, we were prepared to hopefully bring you something today on this uh, Arnold Road project, but we would like to, I guess, delay it one more time to the final meeting of this month, and we will have to do something that month one way or the other. Yeah, I've got a 30-day on the bid termination, but uh, there is a question that I think needs to be resolved administratively between the state and the bid contractor, and that's what we're waiting on, I, so we can know how we need to proceed forward based on that that's correct determination and, and because of, of the effects of COVID on everybody and everybody's time and they're in the office uh, there's been some things that have, have been delayed he should have had renewal he should have been able to renew his uh, certification on the pre-qualified bidders list and that's really the hang-up uh, a, a contractor has to be on that list to be, uh, to be eligible to do this kind of work and for us to be able to get the money to, for reimbursement 
So in fairness, we're just giving him that chance. We did not have it in the spec that he had to be on that list at the date of bid. Okay, so that's why the, the, the hang totally, up. Totally feeble at this point. <laughs> so if if he does, they will be meeting on the twentieth next week. And if he's not on that list to be approved or reviewed, then we're just going to, have to move on. Didn't we Sadly, exclude we somebody else because of the same thing? thing? We did. Yeah. Yeah, last year we had one, and she did qualify. Well, on, on the trail project, it was in the spec that they had to be on that list at the day of bid. Okay. Yeah, opening. That was the difference. And I just so, want to make sure we won't open ourselves up to something. Right. So that yeah. So we're trying to give him. We're giving him every chance, you know, to to get reinstated. Actually, or the fact of the matter is, he submitted the proper paperwork way last year <laughs> in order to be included and approved on the list, and. State government in their proficiencies have misplaced that submitted paperwork, which he has a copy of. That's a good thing. He has a copy of it. So anyway, we're giving him a chance, but we can't go any further than next. You know, we're t we're ten days away from the next meeting anyway. So yeah, right. At that point, we have to move forward. So I apologize that it's on there, but we can't take action. But uh, we will definitely take action next week. Week after next. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to add two more salters to our surplus property list. Uh, to be uh, sold, we're going to uh, try to schedule a uh, an auction of early May. Uh, as soon as I can get that uh, set, definitely I will let you know. Probably, hopefully, report that back to you at our next meeting uh, on a definite date for our sale. Any motion on that? I think so. Just to I'll get make that motion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, take the off the input. Second. 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 short to surplus two salters that will go into auction. Uh, when it is scheduled. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those like sign? Those are good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have three uh, expenditures to report to you. Uh, one being, the first one being the HVAC system at the Government Services Center. Uh, there was a controller that went bad. This controller is actually the brains of the whole system in that, in that it allows us to talk to all the units with a computer. And to have remote access to all of them, be able to reset thermostats, do what have you, including the jail. And uh, so the total cost for that repair was uh, $5,439. Of course, we have split that up. Keegan's looked at it too. We, we split that bill up among uh, three departments, I think. Well, what we want to do on that, uh, in, in consultation with the jailer earlier today, uh, regarding preventive maintenance and the HVAC aspects out there at the Government Service Center is to add his proportional responsibilities into that negotiation. Okay. Uh, you're talking about our advertisement for bids for the preventive maintenance contract. Okay. This is, this is something. To this, is a, this is a repair. Okay. This, this is, is a repair. Yeah. Okay. This is a replacement of that unit. We had to have that, repla that unit replaced. And so I'm just reporting to the court because it's over. It was over the three thousand right. dollar threshold. But uh, you, we, you had bids on it. No, just the one. Just the one price, uh, because he had. They had to come in and, and replace it and reprogram it. It's all part of the programmable controls, which okay. is really kind of sole source. Uh, that part. Uh, we looked at trying to go away from that, but the cost. So we did get a second cost. We looked at. Changing out all the thermostats and going away from the program, well, the program, and the cost was uh, just for the front part of the building was going to be over seven thousand dollars, and we didn't even get into the jail cost. So we just went ahead and and, and then of course we were trying to wait a little bit on it, and the jail comes up and says we've got to be able to change these thermostats. <laughs> so, uh, Dwayne, uh, you know, I know this was covered with uh, the perfection of the group. No, no, this is five years old. We've had the system in now for five years. Had it five years? Yeah. Doesn't seem like it, does it? I know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, all of our warranties sadly have worn have run out. So we talked about that the other day, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Okay. Bring so, it up. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first cost. Um, we have a dump truck repair uh, that was uh, the dump truck sustained damage. From our efforts in removing, trying to remove the ice from all of our roadways back in February during the ice storm and snowstorm, and the cost on repairing that dump truck is forty-five hundred dollars. And that's we've taken that truck. It's in Salyersville, which is where all this equipment was installed on the front of the truck. And so that's the price that they've given back to us to repair that truck. And we're going to 
we're going to include that. Yeah. And we're going to also attempt to include that in our FEMA cost when we submit all the additional for costs uh, uh, related to the ice storm. I was out there and what it did on, on at least two consecutive days, the uh, the blade uh, in its in its proper utilization shared the pins that connected to the frame of the truck and just kept doing it. And yeah. so uh, that's what this is about. Yeah. And we're probably fortunate that we only have one truck damage, but... Yeah, and you, we only get, one. It, it, and you take it to Sayers, well? That's where it was installed. And we wanted them to look at it. They, you know, they knew how they put it on, and the, the hardware that they used to put it on with. So well, I'm going up there next week. You want me to take we, it? We bring it back. Yeah, <laughs> it'll, it'll be ready by then. I hope. Everybody get their cameras and <laughs> yeah. out for that. Maybe even more damage. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe more damage. Maybe more damage by the time we get might, back. We might just let you take take the guy that needs to bring it back up there, and he then he can bring it back. How's that? <laughs> All right, and, and, the, and then the dump truck. And then the third. That's the dump truck. And then the third one was a, a tractor repair, getting ready for mowing and, and trimming season. We had a uh, injector pump go bad on the tractor so we had to have it replaced how are you on the high bar that goes along the side of the road it's the fence on it the long we, arm? we should be we should be good for one more season we hope <laughs> it, okay it's right, about, right now it's not play out it's, it's extended yeah, life. right now it's running but yeah we hope we can get through one more, which will happen we'll have to go get yeah. through one more season Put in your and, budget. and we'll be discussing it in budget season of course even by the end we won't have it to winter time right. so right and honeysuckle as you well know the honeysuckle bushes you know there were, you know, years ago we could go through and trim back a, a road and it would be good for three or four years. Now we're just about doing it every year. What about the cost of the truck? Did you say on this? It was, sorry, $3,954. So. And, and that's the replacement. And that's, and that's John Deere, so that's who we had to go through back there. That need. Yes. So. Uh, equipment uh, budget requirements, Keegan, that we have uh, put uh, the repair. Is that in the budget to handle it's, these? It's under 441. Yeah. It's under 441. Okay. So. And then we also need to do some repairs to our loader. We're probably going to send it to Lexington, uh, to Wilson, because nobody else can work on it. And uh, we'll we'll find out how much that is. And then probably if we can, we're, we're late enough the year now, we might be able to spread it over the next fiscal year, but we'll see. We can do on that. All four of the main cylinders that do the, yeah, all four of the main cylinders are leaking. We'll have to all be repacked. And then there's some bushings that are worn out on the thing. But I mean, we're talking about something that's almost 20 years old. So, you know, it's still running. It's still usable. It just needs some <laughs> repair. Needs some, it needs some work. Right. <laughs> right. So, but that that we haven't got that up there. They're supposed to pick it up, and they haven't come by to pick it up yet. So. Okay. So what's the total on all three of those? Well, the, the HVAC, of course, is different. You know, it's in a different category. It was, and it'll be it was split up between different departments. But the total on it was five thousand four thirty nine. Okay. But the equipment, which is just just public works, just the right. road department, uh, is eighty four fifty four. <coughs> was the total of the two repairs. Okay. So, so entertain a motion uh, to uh, make these repairs on so the so motion made. Uh, Master Dallas, seconded by Master Sanders. Discussions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those like sign? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. What's the next item here? Salt bids. Okay. Uh, we participated with the salt bids through Keiko again this year. And I think you have a copy of those, even though they're maybe a little difficult yeah. to read. Uh, uh, we received bids this time. For the, the standard salt, untreated salt, and for treated salt from one bin, one vendor, uh, I would recommend today that we accept the bid from Detroit Salt Company at ninety three dollars and ninety nine cents, and the bid from Morton Salt Incorporated at ninety four dollars, only a penny difference uh, for the for the, the standard salt. We've done that in the past. We've accepted more than one I'll bid. Make that motion. Second. All right, uh, a motion is made to accept the salt bids uh, as presented. From Detroit Salt and Morton Salt. From Detroit and Morton Salt, made from Madison Gate, second from Madison Salmons. Discussion? Is that Discussion? about the amount that we ordered last year? Uh, 800, we've actually ordered 550. Good. I think we need surplus. I hope it's surplus. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Do you have room for that much salt? Not at one time, no. We order, we order as we use it. And that's what happened to us this last time is we had an order in. Then the night and, and then everything hit and we had could, about seven or eight. <laughs> we had about seven or eight days in a row that we were uh, perception. I will do a, a right hand vote. All those in favor of accepting the bids as presented for Detroit and Bolton Salt, raise the right hand. And the motion carries. Thank you, sirs. For that, uh, it, it, the vote was approved five to zero with one uh, extension absent from the room. All right. And then the other bid was for the tree of salt. We only received one bid, and that was for magic salt. It's two hundred and five dollars a ton. I don't know how much of that we'll buy, but I guess I would like to at least entertain that we accept the bid. How much did we end up using? I mean, there, there are no guarantees on any of these. Okay, we don't have to buy any certain amount, so there's no guarantees. It's just you don't have to buy a pound of it. Right, right. Do you know how much we used when things got tough? Uh, we probably used most of that. We probably used about four hundred tons. And it is all good stuff at that trading salt. It, but it's expensive. Now, you're talking about you're talking about total usage of salt, right? Okay. Uh, no, I'm talking about the total use of the trading salt. Well, we only purchased fifty tons. Okay. It's good on your vehicle too. Yes, it is. Uh, it's very, have very gross. We have a motion <laughs> to uh, approve the uh, the uh, uh, purchase of uh, to approve the bid specs on the trading salt from Magic. Is there a second? Second. second. The motion made by Magic again. Second by Magic Ellis. And uh, discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. <clears throat> like side. Motion carries. All right. All right. One other item I had or was asked to be prepared to speak on today, and uh, it uh, will. I guess, I guess we'll call it other. Y'all had already discussed it at the previous meeting anyway, and that was the ordinance. Uh, the road acceptance ordinance or the ordinance right. that addresses road acceptance and uh, yeah and I think it was circulated yes uh, so uh, Chris Chris can speak on this too but and I may have the wrong word Chris but I think at this point we need to to repeal or or whatever the right word is the existing ordinance and then allow us to fall under the existing subdivision regulations which are already in place and planning and zoning in those regulations in article 3 it refers to road acceptance and how that occurs and uh, it occur and those the, the wording in that section mirrors the wording in KRS which states that we're we, we shall take these roads these new streets over uh, within 90 days after their completion and final inspection and uh, and then in the in the uh, in the subdivision regulations, it also says they have to put up a warranty, a twelve month warranty. So that has to be presented as well. Good. So there's already current language there that we can follow. We're in the process of updating that language, and uh, we're bringing that back to, uh, for further approval. But the current language will work, will suffice. Okay. Well, I think like the past ordinance kind of competed with the ARS. Uh, statute, and, you, know, you know, the argument was that the planning commission or whatever was given that authority when we did the planning and zoning and the things that agreement. So therefore, they, they're the ones that approve and accept roads. At one point, it was uh, fiscal court. I mean, good that the accepted roads so based on are we, are we talking at all about the Joe Sharp? We'll do that afterwards. Okay. So, yes, I, I agree with Wayne that we need to move the first the statute. So, we're which, is, which is in the subdivision rates. But, gentlemen, out of, out of, out of due respect for Magistrate Cullen being absent from the room, I would like to brief recap. We're talking about. Sorry about that. I had an emergency. That's okay. I'm, I'm not. No. I'm, <laughs> No, there's no, there's no, not, no, I don't, I know that. That's my apologizing to the court for having to, to take up more we time. We have a discussion about road, county road acceptance that he's making a recommendation to. And it's Is this regarding Hunt? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Part of it. yes. So, yeah. So real quick again, what, what we're talking about is uh, 
repealing, the county would repeal the, our existing ordinance, which is 620.2, which also includes in there a, a section on accepting roads for county uh, maintenance, uh, and then allowing us to just fall under the current subdivision regulations that are, are in place with, through planning and zoning. Uh, we are also looking at those. Uh, I need to send you a copy of that. We need to look at that wording. I know he's already finished with Article 3, but we need to look at these two, or at least that one section again. The wording is not quite right there, and it needs to be clarified. But anyway, uh, we, that, that needs to be updated, and we're also updating Sections 5 and Section 6. We're just about finished with Section 6. We've already completed 5 with our recommendations and review. Uh, mm -hmm. We are looking at beefing up the current road standard, uh, and we've looked at several counties around us, and the one that we like the best happens to be the one closest to us, and that's Jessamine County. Yes, they have a very good standard that I think will work <clears> well <throat> for our types of soil. <clears throat> they have some are sold to us anyway. So We've talked about that, and we feel very comfortable with the <clears throat> new standard. It, it's not the, it's not the, there is additional depth, but it's the, it's the composition of the additional depth that gives us much more sustainability for a longer term. Yeah. Going into. Yeah. I'll make the motion we uh, repeal ordinance. 620.2 pertaining, pertaining to road acceptance to people. There's second. 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 A motion made to match the game, second to match it short. Now it's time for discussion. And yes, I the effort years ago, Wayne, and you may have been part of it, was, <laughs> was to protect the roads uh, within. That we would be taking on. Do you feel like that with the additional change in the mixture and everything, and, and probably the way that heavy equipment negotiates roads now, this this would achieve that same goal of protecting the roads? Yes. You feel yes. Like, yes. Yes. And so. you will do the inspection That's of right. the roads yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, the the other okay. sections in that ordinance are. Are duplicated in the subdivision regulations anyway. Uh -huh. So all the one, so it's really our ordinance and the subdivision regulations are duplicates of each other. Uh, gotcha. Thanks. Thanks. Except for that acceptance. <laughs> well, let me be clear because this is the first time that, that, that me sitting in this position, and, and I'll, I'll I'll reach out to uh, more experience on the court. In that, if we vote, if we vote to repeal this ordinance. We have to have a first and second reading on repeal because it's ordinance to the public. So I've asked counsel to find out to get this legal determination. If if it is, it will the first reading on the re repeal will be next court. If not, the vote will stand according to his That's advice. Good. Questions? Call for the vote. We'll do a voice vote. All those in favor of repeal of uh the stipulated what is what is that number in 620.2 620.2 see it right there the repeal of uh county order 620.2 uh, signify and vote uh the vote of aye aye, aye. opposed like sign motion carries thank you how do we need to have a motion to acknowledge that we're going to now fall under the subdivision regulations or is that just now happening that really it's understood okay as a part of KRS. Hey, the KRS that we're referring to actually says if you have planned zoning, you follow their regulations. If you don't have planned zoning, but you have some your own guidelines, you're subject to that KRS also, which is kind of interesting. So, so we can't get away from it. What we're doing is just turn up. It, it really does. It's over language. Okay. So I guess the other point then probably needs to wait until we make sure about well, the repeal we'll, of we'll the... Get, we'll get, we'll get, I'll, I'll let everybody know about my uh, email. And it does require a first or second reading to be official. Okay. On the recension, on the revision, repeal of an ordinance. All right. One way or so, another. So acceptance of this new street, we want to wait on that? and Or do you want it to do it subject to? Well, I found a, I'm just like searching through the internet here and see what Shelby County Fiscal Court is the ordinance. They had um, first and second. It is second and given first reading on and 
I would have to say, if you're taking any action on whether you're instituting a new or repealing one, you let would have to let the public have a chance to, to have a say. That's okay. I, yeah. All right, with the first and second rating, you have to. Yeah, so we consider this first rating. You have to advertise. No, we cannot consider this the first rating. Okay. So I'll prepare a. But it has to be it has to be advertised that there is a first reading on this and the other one we talked about earlier. I'll prepare an ordinance repealing that and we'll uh, get it for the next meeting. Yeah. And well, forgive me, Judge, but to reflect back so that we fully understand what we did with respect to the animal situation, and that was also not a first reading today. No, it was no, not. Thank you. Thank you. It was not. Good. It was the second. <laughs> we just skip counting okay. downward. Okay, we we'll skip. Good question. <laughs> Good catch, actually. Anything else? That was it. All right. Uh, Appreciate it. We we did share with the state. Uh, the judge and I had a meeting with the state, our our annual uh, rural secondary meeting, and in that meeting, we always share with them issues that you all brought up to us, and I keep a running list, and uh, I did put those in writing to them. Uh, each of those ones that have not been addressed, uh, like just like the shouldering on Goggin Road. Well, let, let's, share that. Thing. Let, let's, uh, let's share that with the, with the court. And I don't know that we've done that. Have we done that? The, the, addendum, the addendum list that we sent to. We have Mr. not. Taylor. That's what I was going to ask yeah. about. I'll be glad to email those to you if you'd like to see yeah, them. Sure you know, just so you see what we. Crispin Lane on there still? Uh, the tree. The tree has been discussed. I think it was. But it wasn't on his response, so I'll have to go back and look. I brought it up when he was here, and I don't yeah. know if they took care of it or not. So. Maybe that's why I didn't put it on there, because you brought it up. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, we'll follow up. That's a maintenance issue. That's something we follow up here. These these are issues more like, you know, a little more broader issues, like safety improvements to 52, safety improvements to 34, God, 33, yes. things, things a little more, little more, a little bit larger. But we did include some maintenance items, too. No, I just, if, if you're finished with that okay. comment, I yeah, was just going to... Um, I don't ever usually have many things in my district to call you about or ask you about. But <laughs> there's a there's a large old I would call it a large stump now. It used to be a tree that's out here by the parking lot that's covered in vines and stuff now. Okay, it did bloom. I did bloom, and it was pretty. <laughs> it was pretty wild. It did bloom. And it, it did bloom. But I think it's lived its we'll life, yeah. We'll, we'll and I wanted to see if we could possibly consider yeah. removing that. I need to get her. Stuff. I need to get her early one morning before the vehicles get here and do that. Right. Thank you. So, is that on county property? Or <laughs> city? Oh, no. no, it's on. Right. It's, it's on our property. It's yeah. right, right here. Little park 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 parking lot. Need yeah. chip. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thank All you, Dwayne. Right. And we're still working on the gutter. I've, I've finally reached some other folks that are going to come look at it and give me a price. So we'll, oh, we'll yeah. Add jail detention center into the equation on the primary maintenance. Yeah, bill. well, we'll have to hunt. We've already had about three or four vendors come through and look okay. at, at the courthouse and the front part of the GSC already, and, and we'll have to try to see the, who, try to remember who they were and hunt them down. Let them know that we've added that to it. Yeah, and, they, uh, it, and everybody else, except, right? Everybody else, we put a date out next Monday. We're going to take a grand tour of everything again, yeah. so we can do that. Walter. And it's even though we advertise for bids, uh, it's not going to be over thirty thousand dollars, so it's really not a biddable thing. So we'll, we can call it quotes, but you know. But anyway, what time are you going to do that? It's either nine or ten. I nine forgot o'clock. what time. Nine yeah, what, what, yeah. yeah, nine o'clock on the. Uh, We're trying to think. We got some meetings here. Is that when the walkthrough is? I'm trying to think. Of I think it's Monday because the, we open them Thursday, next Thursday. Yeah, maybe it is Monday. Yeah. Okay. Well, you want to just wander through with us, or? Well, I I know the twentieth we got some of us got uh, meet committee meetings on budget. Okay. Uh, so well, we won't know. we won't disturb you. Okay. We might wave at you as we go. I'd really walk around you. <laughs> All right. Send me a shot right. in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Green's a good evening. Is still morning? Still morning? Yeah. I just have some comp agreements that need to be approved. Or Make a motion for approval. Second. Motion to move Mr. Sammons and second to move short to approve the comp time agreements. Uh, is there, I think I have two, is that right? Yeah. There's 
look on the back. Yeah, there's, there's four. 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 Four
um, they are willing to put us on their insurance as an additional insured, um, and I would just like your blessing to let them do that. The the food truck is is Frank Captain Frank's. Oh my allow him to use it. Had the business there before he yeah. went to the food truck concept. Yeah. Kind of neat. Got yeah. a motion right here. Me and then Jamie. No oh, motion made to accept. Yep. The, okay and by Magic Cullen and Magic Jay seconded. Okay now. I we're have good. I have a feeling we may see other requests, so I don't know if we want to come up with possibly some sort of quick little application okay. for them to apply and and. Uh, also, the painting of the parking lot. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to talk to them about that. That yeah, that Julie and I discussed that. I yeah. think the insurance and make sure they pick up all the trash in that parking lot. Um, I feel very comfortable that they will, but we'll put it in writing yeah. in short form. I know yeah. Franks will be fine, but you it's never know if you get circuit and other people there, so we need to put it in the... All these people get the food, and then they'll paint it up. Yeah. 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 Like Franks, I can ask the Angie out. to bring some cans out or something when we know they're Usually coming. food trucks are required to do that yeah. anyway to bring their yeah. own, so make sure, yeah, yeah that yeah. we just have that in there. In a broader sense, we see them popping up all over it, often at the showroom. Yeah. Are they uh, going through the health department? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the discussion. We'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I see the two right there. There was aye on that one. That vote, black side. Oh, okay. Pass me that. All right, and finally, I. Be prepared. I will have your business license draft program on the on the April twenty seventh agenda for discussion and for direction. Discussion. So. So anyone that, that requests. To be like a food truck, just uh, they need to have their, uh, of course, their health permit, but they also need to go through planning and zoning too to make sure they have a temporary. I think they need to talk to Bridget first Don't in, in, in the city. The... We're not, for right yeah, never now. in front of the hub. Yeah. Right <laughs> Julie, I'd, I'd like to see us uh, this business license. Mm -hmm. If you're in a food uh, business, I think we ought to double that fee. Okay, I'll put that in there. No comment. What is that? You're going to double the fee. Does that need to be voted on? Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got the discussion on it. You want to check the menu out. That's <laughs> really All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jerry. Uh, count for your own. I mean, I don't have a whole lot, but I want to read it that Crawford has. <coughs> so I got an email from, from Tom. That's pretty cool that you're talking to the mission of the park. So that was, that was great. So, you know, the big thing was you we know, got this outstanding invoice to interest engineering $4,903. Um, I kind of felt that, you know, that, that basically uh, that the parks you know, asked us to do this and use these people, you know, so I've been seeking out to them and the last time I said, hey, you know, I wrote them, they didn't really write me back. So you don't let them call said, email them again. So I did and uh, was talking about this and I did receive an email on April the 9th from Will Adams, he's the deputy commissioner that keeps talking to parks. It's a good email. Uh, basically it just says, Chris, we're thinking that the national parks would need to be a Signatory on the deed in order to avoid creating the cloud on the title for any future owners, which I agree. Uh, as far as the invoice goes, can we agree to reimburse the county? We can agree to reimburse the county for the surveyor expense once the deed of correction is recorded. We'll have to draft some sort of MOA to that effect, but it shouldn't be too big of a burden. Thank you. So that's good. I mean, we've got it in writing. They're saying they're going to pay for it. Uh, and I would ask that we go ahead and Pay this coming outstanding now for it's actually on my agenda uh, uh my comments but i'll go ahead now and then i'm going to defer to our president-elect keiko uh because by coincidence judge and i leaned over after being very impressed with commissioner meyer and i said judge i'm gonna go talk to him out in the hallway about crawford and uh, judge agreed to that uh, we have corresponded twice since as recently as late yesterday evening and he's all full steam ahead uh, to help us out in any way he can to save Crawford House. Sir. Uh, I, I've known him. That was last week. Quite some time. I talked to him the day before yesterday at the meeting because uh, my son's a friend of his, the attorney over Nickelville. 
and uh, he brought this up. I had mentioned to him, and he said, we're going to move full steam ahead on the Crawford house. So, good, yeah, good. A, and we need to. Uh, and he's, to he's a guy yeah. that, Judge, I think you agree that uh, I think anybody can get along with. He seems well, to be fabulous. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I think that, that that'll be settled right away. Well, uh, what what he's recommending is on this $4,900 bill, right. if we can pay for it now, it, it appears by in writing from his deputy commissioner that we, once the sale of the property is transacted, it's not we, a sale. They, they reimburse, they they reimburse us. But, but he was very amenable to the idea that the state could, not will, could deaccession the property. And we've already got three people that the judge told me to keep track of who would be delighted to bid on. Yeah. Right. So let's make it clear. The state owns it. Right. They've asked us to do <laughs> a deed of correction from a time period when we owned it. So I kind of felt like we're, you know, with them not being on there to sign because you know, I've, I've owned a property and somebody comes and tries to change something on my deed. I mean, that just doesn't seem right without my <laughs> agreement, you know. So definitely when they sent their uh, proposed deed out, I mean, I sent mine back and it had some of them signing because I don't, I just don't see how you get away with that without the, the true property owner now you know, signing off on it. So that, that's good news all around. I mean, it sounds like we're going to get this going. I mean, it's anybody has been forever. Where would that come from? The the, the, the money to pay for that in advance for reimbursement. I mean, I mean, we've been trying to like the the judge's way. office. Or, or how would it's that work? Budget for <laughs> the money to, to pay, pay that survey, nearly five grand. It come out of general fund. Did that come out of the general fund? We need a motion on that. Yeah, we do. So move. Second. Yeah. Motion made to to take the money from the general fund to pay the survey on Crawford House with the anticipation that it will be recovered down the road. From the state. Yes. Yeah. Is, that, is that a correct statement? So it right. was made by Master Dell, seconded by Master Savage. Is there any more discussion on that? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Those like sign? Nothing cares. Good. And Thank by you. the way, I have advised anybody who would bid in the conversations and emails that I've had with them that they would have to meet all the state stipulations on the rehabilitation of that property, which comes out of the Heritage Council and two or three other entities of the state. Okay, well, sure. Treasurer Hinkle. Uh, I've circulated the February financials. Uh, Anybody that wants to discuss them, as always, you can come by my office if you have any questions. Uh, I'll have March in our quarterly report at the next meeting. Um, other than that, I just I just want to remind everyone in here as we go through the this budget season together that uh, it's our due diligence to do our best job, and that entails doing what is right and fair for everybody. Uh, that includes all departments, employees, and for the greater good of all 30,000 taxpayers of this great county that we live in. So I just wanted to reiterate We're all that. about that. We're all about that. All of us. I just wanted to reiterate that as we all have these meetings together and this is my first one and I'm looking forward to it as much as I can. You just keep right. us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where you at, John? All right. Anybody have any other questions or anything for now, just just on the financials there, just real quick. Okay point out something to make sure I'm reading this right. As through February of twenty one in this fiscal year, we're at eight million seven hundred and some change thousand, right? Is our total revenue? Yes. And then and total revenue for fiscal year twenty was nine million three, right? Nine yes sir. Three. So so we're basically in March we will Exceed our total revenue for a hundred percent. Yeah. So with, with so with three months to go after that, so just wanted to point that out. One, that's a good thing. Oh yeah, yeah that's a good especially thing. with the crazy year that we've had. That's right. a good thing. That's a good thing. Well, as as you'll hear in our reports, EMS is going to need a lot of money. So right. Okay. Jail. 
Yeah, yeah no, but, but I do think it's a it's a very positive economic indicator that revenue is coming in and people, might going back. Judge, would I be able to order to share with Susanna? Please? Good point, Magistrate Gay. Okay. Uh, it's about the massive volume that they're getting. No, I think if it's okay, let let's uh, uh let's let Julie share a uh, report out of our tax annual. They said they have never seen the returns come in in the, in the volume that they've gotten in the dollar increases that they've seen. They are just astounded. Was it expecting a much different lower, picture? Yeah, and, and they're, they're, they said they've never seen money come in like this. Might this have as to do with the discoveries there. that you have made of past arrears? And we thank you for that. Mm -hmm. well, there is some of that. These, yeah, there's, there's some of that. But really, these are businesses just doing much better than we expected. Yeah, yeah. strong economic yeah, much better. Well, even the state, when we were down there last week, it said the same thing. Yeah, that they were shocked with some of the revenues coming in. Well, a lot of that is the extra funding True. that sure. Fed money. the Fed our money, money, our money that was recirculated. Right. So. There's one exception, I think, and that's the road money. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. A lot, All right. A lot of, still a lot of discussion about that. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, the fact that that's been very obviously disappointing. You got anything else? No, sir. Okay. I guess that's up to me. So what I have presented to you is, for your consideration, I am unaware of the, the fact, I don't believe we've ever had, had uh, you remember an organizational chart? No. What is that? <laughs> uh, that? Yeah. So I, I took it upon myself to create an organizational chart, and in doing so, it's just my nature to see things that I think I want to, to I want to call attention to. the The name solid waste is used quite a bit, but I prefer, if it would be acceptable to the court, to change that to environmental services because we deal with more than just solid waste in the form of recycling and some other things. And then on the on the on the name human resources and payroll officer, which is is uh, is in the in my office here, uh, Shannon's position, I would I would like to change that name to employee assistance because that's what she does with hiring uh, other things, medical, just a lot of other, a wider range than just human resources or payroll in itself. Just like you consider those two no changes. But to go through the organizational chart, you will see there is no line between the top six, but my, the court's position and the attorney and the jailer, there's no direct line. Those direct lines of communication come down and you see where joint jail is shared between my position as judge executive, the county attorney, and the jailer to joint jail. And then on down, uh, tax administration is under the county uh, treasurer as well as the assistant and the finance officer. And these alignments, the joint office administrator is jointly shared, and that's Ms. Rita out there, shared between EMF, Public Works, and environmental services. So this is this is a very good start for everybody to, to understand where uh, the county, how the county is organized. And I think it, if somebody can show me something I have not considered organizationally, I'd like to add it in or make that correction and change. But other than that, I don't know if we need a motion per se, but if, if the court is, is okay with this, I'm going to throw this out as something that we have never had before. Chris, is there anything in the statutes where we need to say AKA personnel or AKA human resources? I don't add anything else to it, Tommy. It looks good to me. I don't want to. Council. <laughs> in <-house> council. Yeah. <laughs> Move you up, Tommy. Keep that motion. Well done, Judge. Thank you. Down, down, well <laughs> yeah, good sound. Is everybody okay with this as presented? So I can start changing, you know, the environmental services. 
I like that because it's more inclusive than. Well, it's just not going to be hard for me to remember environmental services. Well, and I know, I know it is, uh, Mr. Magistrate, but uh, you know what? What drew my attention to it? Now, this is going to sound funny. It's okay. But when we were talking about hiring floater for that department, it just drove me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right, I get you. <laughs> is that a number one or number two floater? <laughs> I'm just saying, no. I'm just aggravating you, Judge. Okay, good. <laughs> He's used to it. Keep me in line. Keep me in line. But if it's okay with you guys, we'll press forward with this as our, our county organizational chart. And we'll make sure you each have a color copy of it for your records and purposes. And the name changes are, are okay and approved. Do you want to do that by motion? I'll That's make a motion to we'll approve it. Motion Second, to accept it. it. It should be accepted, I guess, instead of approve it. To accept, to accept. Right. And made by Magic Seven the second for Magic Cullen. Nope. Short. Short? Short. Sorry. Short did right. the number two. Short. <laughs> uh, any discussion on, on the recommendations of the motion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 So the like sign, no one cares. Thank you. The, the other thing is uh, at the request of, of the court uh, and, and several magistrates, we, uh, Ms. Julie and I, went down and uh, we have visited with. Uh, the, the, the tenants down there and, and it's Jody and and uh, uh, the chamber and uh, uh, CVB, uh, EDP and all those that are down there. And we went down with, with uh, the layouts of Constitution Square and where the tenants are. And they were, they, we were received very cordially and very uh, much in agreement. We learned something and I don't know, you guys may know, may have known this, and I didn't. But there are there are uh, restrictions on that property as it was the as it was issued through the uh, HUD appropriations when it was done. And so, Julie, we requested. I don't know if you received. You you got a copy? Yes, yes, yes. The original. Okay. So we've got to go through there, through those, and report back to the court what latitude or lack thereof we have to do with those buildings as far as tenants. Yeah, we we looked at that a little bit before when we were started this process, and I know there's there's restrictions through the as it the Heritage Council. Or? One of the I, I believe if they're correct, we will only be able to affect non-profit. non, -profit. non -profit. Uh, in, those buildings, which we talked about. We got reviews of the paperwork. So I will bring that, I guess, in the next meeting. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But they are open. But they're open, and what our discussion led to yesterday in Fisher House, Row House 1, which is the closest one to Main Street, is to vacate that for a potential somebody like a pasta or somebody else. And Josh would go share. Now this is this is a news flash that happened just April yesterday. The regarding the part of Danville where uh, Ms. Conley is currently now working. They have they're in the process or have moved out of Goldsmith and moved down to uh, office on the other side of Maine on on uh, Second Street. So. Which office is that? It, um, it's right next to McAfee. The one right, the bill, the, right okay. next to McAfee's. Okay. Right by the new. Uh, uh, who owns who own that? Yeah, the Heritage Museum. Cleveland Arnold. Cleveland Arnold. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He owns the bakery also. Well, that's somebody told me Cleveland, right? It is. I, I've been surprised what the McAfee's, where that spot is. And, so they are they are uh vacating Grayson's Tavern. Yes. Yeah, C V B was upstairs at <laughs> Grayson's. They're going to move over to the upstairs of Goldsmith and share that with Josh. That makes sense. Okay. So Grayson's is is ripe for total restoration uh as a as a tour Tour facility upstairs, lodging downstairs, tavern, all that. So, uh, 
kind of what we we're talking about and thinking right now with the course to, you know yeah. pleasure but it's great wonderful you said that. uh so grayson's which <clears throat> from a habitation point of view leaks like a sieve okay so it's great that they're moving out over to Goldsmith and Grayson's will be totally vacated as well as will Fisher House Row House one will be totally vacated like and we'll give you a report back once we run through council and do some other due diligence on meeting the the uh, nonprofit the nonprofit aspect of or whatever other constraints might be associated with that property. Like would be that bot that that loan that we got to restore that mm -hmm. I suspect. Yeah, that's, I think that's what it's tied to. It's tied. Julie, weren't you initially involved? Yeah. I was going to say you ought to be the most forefront it. expert. In I know. I just want to read it. It's been. <laughs> Eight years, so I really they, I remember seeing your name. They on did, yeah. We did discuss also one potential option, and I don't know that we can get there, but this we will examine the possibility, and that's on the credit conference center, which is the schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. It's not historical, okay? And what what if if we could put a door in the Fisher Row House side between the two windows and the entry and exit point there, that would allow access to two additional offices in addition to the Arts Council or Commission that is there and free up a where they the conference room in that facility could be used and the, and the offices, not including the bathroom, would, would be separated by door. So that it wouldn't be uh, disturbing confidential or other uh, other things. If we can do that, we would like to try and look at doing that also. Yeah, that'd be great. Good. So that's kind of important on what we've what we've searched so far. And uh, the other thing is, we had discussions earlier about maybe uh, I, it's not on here, so I'm not going to throw it out. But we, we, I just want to make mention of it. During our early committee meeting, we did have some discussions about some potential property that might be available to us uh, for expandability of, of county owned. So we're looking at those kinds of things to move things forward too. And it's too early in any kind of discussion to bring that to the forefront for consideration. But we're looking at all kinds of options. Uh, next month, I envision that we'll have some bid proposals. But no, we'll have. We'll, we'll talk about the bid proposals on the sidewalk and some roofing things at Constitution Square that are out there. We're closed either closed middle next week. Um, and other than that, I'm about done. I am done. Uh, so since the conference center is not historical, is that still tied to the same rules? Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, again, we're going to review that language. So I'm looking for holes in. That's a different. The Heritage Council holds the easements on all those properties. It's really cut. Which is why we have to go to them. They won't let us take the brick sidewalk out and put stands brick in the brick back. And so those kind of things we're discussing looking to it. Yeah. And that's different than the I equated to to a unfunded mandate. <laughs> maybe maybe we can swap out favors with the Crawford House and get them to help us with this. Good. Good. <laughs> I so, that, but that's all I have. So right now we can move to your district reports. We'll start over here with Matt Shell. Thank you. Um, first time we've been here for two hours and forty five minutes. I'll, I'll be under fire. <laughs> uh, it was very disappointing to observe that Monday night city council in Danville, um, which we're trying to work with on the EDA move forward i believe on a third draft without our seeing anything past rough language in the first draft. um i really want to cooperate with them and collaborate for future projects but i wish they would keep us informed when they're going to pop up to the public or something like that that's as, that's as far as i'll take that no, um i was thrilled uh wednesday night when i was in lexington for our conference with the judges others. I was John. 
uh, I was thrilled to get a 9.30 at night call from somebody who thought that he had once lived in my district. Actually, it was that Short's district. But this elderly gentleman called, and he had fond remembrances back in the late 40s and 50s of a gentleman that two of our magistrates knew uh, as a magistrate. Uh, am I right that it's Morris Martin? Uh, he had been a magistrate, uh, apparently. No boy. In, in my district. Not one of the no boys. Yeah. <laughs> and the man who called me in his elder years is reflecting on the fact that his family had lived on what is Roselle, his last name, and he felt very wonderful that their family had their name on there, but they were not a family of means. And apparently, anytime he needed three or four dollars, uh, Mark would pick him up, take him out to his farm out in Portland, uh, and then he even mentored him in other ways that were mentioned to me by Mr. Tom Roselle. With that in mind, and I spoke to the judge two days ago about this, um, I'd like to make contact with Mike Wilder and with um, Dwayne Campbell to see what the complications of a hyphenated or just the two names of Roselle Martin uh, in a change of that on our map. If, if you don't mind, Magistrate, I would like to add to that uh, Magistrate Short since Roselle is we in talked, his district. Yeah, we talked uh, that, about that. Did you collectively make uh, uh, process, to pursue the processes for a name change Thank on you. that street? I, since I, I Roselle was in the sec, is in the second district. Uh, it, it was very touching that uh, that he would want to honor one of our former magistrates that way. So yes, I'm, I'd be delighted. I had one concern. Yes, sir. How many people lived on that road? <laughs> one family. Is that it? One. Because what I'm look what I'm looking at is oh. there's more than one family. You got the sawmill involved, back there. Then they might not want that name changed. Well, you, you know well what we can pursue it. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah, okay. Just just pursue it. Go out there and talk to Yeah. Well, that's but Martin. Just one Martin. farm out there. I mean, what? Martin's only family lives back there. Okay. So I that could be no problem. I hear it is, gentlemen. Right there's Roselle Road. Right. Yeah. Right, right on the other side of Catholic Mount Cemetery. Right through the hill. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's that. Yeah. We will do that. Okay, so you guys work together and do that. Anything else? That's it. All right, Magistrate Gay. Um, now I just want to say in, in my district, it's exciting that obviously a lot of construction going on and getting ready to start. Obviously, the fire station is clearly under construction. Um, the center project, and I appreciate everybody's support on our little part of that today. That's going to be a, again, a, a really big project for the school and for the community for, I think for athletic tourism, it will bring a lot of, uh, a lot of visitors through the community for years to come with that project. Um, also, I do want to put on the agenda soon or, or have us work to um, get an update on the city master planning process. I think we've talked about that. So I don't want us to forget about that, to, to get that, you know, it doesn't have to be immediately, but just when it can fit into the agenda, to talk about that. And I wish I'd said something to President Moreland when he was here, because I also think it would be good for us to get an update on the Center Works project that's going on above Magistrate Cullen's establishment at the hub over there on the upstairs of the, of the hub building. And uh, see if we can get an update on that, including possibly going and, and seeing the facility. It's really amazing what all they're doing up there. And I think it would be good for everybody to be updated on what that program is. And what's Why don't we let you handle that uh, that uh, communication? And I would love to meet with uh, the Center Works folks and and uh, uh, President Moreland and you and go over and tour that. that yeah, we possibly could even have I don't know when it's ready. It's, it's, ready a, it's a big space and it'd be a nice place to even, uh, to even meet. I don't know, right, well, I know but a uh, Center um, Malcolm Bryant owns it, and uh, Madison Silver is the president of Malcolm Bryant. He's a former sen center uh, alumni. Yeah. Uh, doing fantastic things with the building. He, they just did some upgrades to my portion, which will kind of match what they're doing up there. I just believe. Used a bunch of reclaimed wood to fix something in the front of mine. Did we present them with a copy of the uh, center campus master plan? So you got that in your package. Yeah. I also have access if you want it. We can send out a link today. The uh, Center College Strategic Plan for 
2020-2021, if you would like that in addition to review. It's a set of documents that they put out. But I'm going to let you handle that coordination when it's best feasible. Right, because I do think on our, on our, you know, I think we need to make sure we're obviously thinking out that I think the judge has been doing a great job with this. And at least help put this point it down. To think about our long range or planning process for our own facility needs. And I think that does tie in. There are some neat things within the city planning process that we need to look at and see how we can. They've even included us in their planning process and have it. They have. So I think there's some things that we can we need to look at and talk about and consider as far as long range plans. For they, uh, that means they paid for those enhancements. Exactly. I think that'll be a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> we can offer that to them. <laughs> you got anything else? That's it. All right, Mansion Sevens. Uh, the only thing I have that I'd like to welcome Miss Galloway. Oh, absolutely. I'd like, like to welcome you, and I'd like to make a motion to authorize her name. <laughs> okay. After that, she may not want to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Phil. Uh, she can, see, use, he she can got... use this side. Thank you. Thank you for that. Careful. Uh, yeah. That should come. <laughs> uh, well, it's springtime. It's nice to see the trail on 2168 coming together coming together and some other ones that uh i'm actually excited for some of these trails to kind of give some uh different outdoor opportunities and i think they're good for the community so i'm i'm excited i'm hoping that we'll uh we'll have more popping up what um, happens when they get to the railroad bridge it, it seems to end totally right now, yeah for right now it does it does that's as far as our funding would take us so I think it's, it it would be nice, kind of like the Legacy Trail in Lexington. It, I know that one's envisioned to go all the way around, but it would also be nice to have something where we have a trail that goes all the way up the Parable and uh, along that way to kind of connect everything. It would be, and that one over at Phil's District. Yep, yeah, spectacular. Yeah. They're getting ready to do some stuff over at the one on, uh, on Stanford Avenue as well uh, to connect the parking lot. So... So it's it's exciting to see those kind of things happen, and hopefully our, our new CBB person will continue to find ways to, to get those trails going. So, well, as a matter of record, I, so far um, uh, I had no vote in that matter uh, when when they wrote, but uh, I will say that the current acting director has been uh, very forward leaning and uh, very. Uh, Cooperative and mm -hmm. to work with and discuss issues with as it relates to CBD. Yeah, she's. I'd echo those comments, and she has insight to the future on several things she's brought up. So. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of things. And I think, I think there was something on your email that she should probably come and talk to us about. Yeah, some of the federal funding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that there, there's a, as you learned in the conference yesterday and the day before, there's a lot of. So I get the procedures that are still being tweaked and fine tuned before we can move forward with any of that. Yeah, of course. There's always. Anything else? I think that's a happy tax day. Happy tax day. <laughs> well, Trojan it's an extended. One. Extended, Trojan yeah. One. yeah. Hard time of the month for me. You don't have anything? No. Okay, well, just a couple of things. First, you can tell Springs here because I saw a family having lunch in Constitution Square. And that was great to see oh, family yeah. on the grass and using the space there. I think that's what we all want. Lastly, I don't know how we do this, but let me throw it out for y'all's discussion. Is to say thank you to Ann that served with us. Yeah. And uh, just some way that we can it? do something. How about something. if I... If, Julie and I put something together like our proclamation that yes, we sir. have done and a, a letter of appreciation that we all signed, we all signed. under the county 
logo and, and do something like that. Just something like that for her. She served as well, and we appreciated it. And That'd be okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll present that at next board session. Yeah, thank you. That would work for me. Griffin Gate could cater a lunch, you know, for her. You get some ham sandwiches. <laughs> get big cake, but then a bologna sandwich. There you go. All right. Is that all you have? Thank you. Uh, if there's no other business before the court uh, discussed today, uh, that's not on the agenda, then uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Like a motion to adjourn. Second. Me. And uh, seconded by Mr. Best Schultz. thing Phil said all day. And uh, <laughs> all those in favor, speak by the same. Aye. Aye. Standing in Germany. Thank you, gentlemen. We made it.